In the quiet whispers of a shadowy forest, where the trees stood tall and old, a tale of mystery and all unfolded. It was a time before time, in a land filled with magic and wonder. The world was not yet shaped, and the gods roamed freely, their hearts filled with both mischief and might. Among them was Loki, the trickster god, known for his cunning ways and sharp tongue. But on this occasion, Loki's actions were far from mere tricks, they were bound to change the course of the universe. Loki found love in the giantess Angerboda, whose name meant the one who brings grief. Together, they bore three children, each unique and terrifying in their own right. The first was Fenrir, the monstrous wolf whose strength and hunger knew no bounds. The second was Hel, a half-living, half-dead being who would rule over the realm of the dead. And then there was Jormungandr, the serpent destined to grow so large that he would encircle the world and grasp his own tail. The gods, the Asir, watched these births with a mix of fascination and fear. They knew that these children were not ordinary, they were omens of something greater, something darker. As Jormungandr slipped into the world, he was just a tiny snake, but the gods sensed his potential. There was a coldness in his eyes, a silent promise of the chaos he would bring. The air felt thick with anticipation, as if the very land knew that a great storm was on the horizon. The gods decided to take action. Odin, the All-Father, was wise and foresaw the danger that Loki's offspring posed. He knew that these children could not be left to grow unchecked. With a heavy heart, Odin ordered that the children be taken from their mother and father. It was an act born out of both fear and love for the world he had helped create. The gods could not allow these beings to roam free, for they sensed that each of them held the power to bring about the end of days. Fenrir, the wolf, was taken and bound with a magical chain, crafted with care and precision by the dwarves. It was a chain made of things that did not exist, things that only the gods could imagine. But even in his youth, Fenrir's strength was unmatched, and it took all the gods might to subdue him. His growls echoed through the heavens, a sound so terrifying that it sent shivers down the spines of even the bravest warriors. Hel, the Dark Maiden, was cast into the land of the dead. There, she would rule over those who died of sickness and old age, a grim task that suited her cold and different nature. Her half-living, half-dead form was a constant reminder of the thin line between life and death. She accepted her fate with a quiet resolve, her eyes reflecting the souls she would one day govern. As for Jormungandr, the gods decided to cast him into the great ocean that surrounded Midgard, the world of men. It was said that the sea was so vast that it had no end, a perfect prison for a creature destined to grow beyond measure. As they lowered the serpent into the water, there was a moment of eerie silence. The waves, usually restless and noisy, seemed to hold their breath, as if recognizing the power that was being unleashed upon them. The ocean embraced Jormungandr, and as he swam deeper, he began to grow. His body stretched and stretched, until he became a serpent so immense that he circled the entire world. The water seemed to shiver around him, acknowledging his dominion. The sailors and fishermen of Midgard began to tell tales of a great sea serpent, glimpsed in the depths, its eyes glowing like embers in the dark water. Some said that to see Jormungandr was to witness the end of all things, for he was a harbinger of Ragnarok, the final battle where gods and giants would clash and the world would be reborn in fire and ice. Jormungandr's siblings each played their roles in the tapestry of fate, but it was the serpent who became a living symbol of the great cycle. He was a creature of awe and terror, a being who would one day rise from the depths and meet his destiny. The gods watched, their hearts heavy with the knowledge of what was to come. They knew that the day would arrive when Jormungandr would release his tail and the world would shake with his rage. Until then, the serpent remained in the ocean's embrace, a silent guardian of the deep, waiting for the moment when the prophecy would unfold. In the quiet moments, when the waves whispered and the wind sighed, you could almost feel the presence of Jormungandr. He was a reminder of the delicate balance of the universe, a balance that could tip with the slightest touch. The birth of Jormungandr and his siblings was not just the start of their stories, it was the beginning of a tale woven with threads of fate and destiny, a tale that would echo through the ages, touching the hearts of those who heard it. 
in the shadows of a mysterious and ancient land, where magic danced in the air and the gods walked among mortals, there existed a figure whose name sent shivers down the spine of anyone who uttered it, Loki. Known as the trickster god, Loki was a figure of both admiration and fear. He was a master of mischief, a being whose cunning and charm could win the hearts of gods and mortals alike. Yet, behind his playful facade lay a complex soul, one that carried the weight of a family unlike any other. Loki's lineage was a tapestry woven with threads of chaos and mystery. He was born to the giantess Laufey and the giant Farbadi, making him a Jotun by birth, yet he found his place among the Asir gods. This duality of his nature set the stage for a life filled with contradictions. As a father, Loki's story took a turn that would forever alter the course of the world. His children were not mere offspring, they were beings of immense power and destiny, each with a role to play in the grand narrative of Norse mythology. And Garboda, whose name meant the one who brings grief, was the mother of Loki's most feared and awe-inspiring children. She was a giantess of great strength and mysterious beauty, residing in the dark and shadowy lands of Jotunheim. Their union was not born of love, but rather a connection that transcended the mundane. It was as if the very fabric of the universe wove them together, knowing that their offspring would shape the future of gods and mortals alike. The children of Loki and Angerboda were three in number, each one a symbol of the untamed forces of nature and the universe. The first child was Fenrir, the great wolf whose destiny was to bring about the end of the world. Born with a hunger that could never be sated, Fenrir was a beast of unimaginable size and power. As a pup, he was deceptively small, but his eyes held a feral glint, a spark of the untamed wildness within. The gods, fearful of his potential, sought to bind him with chains, but none could hold him. It was only a magical ribbon, forged by the dwarves and made of impossible things, that could contain his strength. Yet, even bound, Fenrir's existence was a ticking time bomb, a creature destined to break free and wreak havoc on the world. The second child was Hel, a being whose very existence blurred the lines between life and death. Half of her body was a beautiful maiden, while the other half was that of a decaying corpse. She was a haunting figure, a ruler of the dead, tasked with overseeing the souls who did not die in battle. Her kingdom was a cold and shadowy place, a reflection of her own divided nature. Hell's role was a somber one, yet she carried it with a quiet dignity. She was neither cruel nor kind, she simply was a guardian of the underworld and a keeper of the dead. And then there was Jormungandr, the Midgard Serpent, a creature destined to grow so large that he would encircle the entire world. Born in the dark waters of the Primordial Sea, Jormungandr was a symbol of chaos and destruction. He was a serpent whose body stretched beyond comprehension, a creature whose very existence was a reminder of the fragility of the world. The gods cast him into the ocean, hoping to contain his power, but they knew that one day he would rise, signaling the end of all things. The family tree of Loki was not one of gentle branches and tender leaves, it was a twisted and gnarled thing, filled with dark corners and hidden shadows. It was a lineage marked by power and destiny, each member playing a crucial role in the cosmic balance. Loki, with his charm and cunning, was the trunk of this tree, holding together a family that was both feared and revered. His children, born of Angerboda's mysterious strength, were the branches that reached out into the unknown, touching the very edges of fate and prophecy. The role of Angerboda in this tale was not a minor one. She was the mother who bore these beings into the world, a silent force whose influence was felt in every corner of their destinies. Her name, the one who brings grief, was a fitting title, for her children were harbingers of sorrow and chaos. Yet, she was not an evil figure. She was simply a part of the cosmic dance, a dancer whose steps were written in the stars long before time began. The story of Loki's lineage is not just a tale of gods and monsters, it is a reflection of the complexities of life itself. It is a reminder that even in the world of myths and legends, there are no simple heroes or villains, only beings trying to find their place in a universe filled with wonder and terror. The children of Loki and Angerboda were born into a world that both feared and needed them, a world that knew that their existence was necessary for the balance of all things. In the end, the lineage of Loki is a testament to the power of destiny and the inevitability of fate. 
It is a story that resonates with the truth that every being, no matter how small or great, has a role to play in the grand tapestry of existence. And as the tales of Loki and his children continue to echo through the ages, they remind us that even in the face of chaos and uncertainty, there is beauty in the mystery of it all. In the stillness of a forgotten age, where myths and legends were woven into the very fabric of existence, a name echoed through the realms, stirring both fear and reverence. Jormungandr the mere utterance of this name conjured images of immense power, a creature whose presence was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. It was a name that carried the weight of destiny, a name that would become synonymous with the end of days. The name Jormungandr translates to the huge monster or great beast, a fitting title for the serpent that would grow to encircle the world. But the name held more than just a description of size. It was a symbol of something much deeper, a representation of the forces that lay beneath the surface of our world, waiting to rise and claim their place in the great cycle of life and death. Jormungandr was born to Loki, the trickster god, and the giantess Angerboda. As the Midgard serpent, he was destined to play a pivotal role in the cosmic balance. From the moment of his birth, there was a sense that Jormungandr was more than just a creature, he was a force of nature, a being whose existence was intertwined with the fate of the universe. As Jormungandr grew, his name became a symbol of the unknown, the uncontrollable forces that lurk beneath the surface of our world. He was the embodiment of chaos, a reminder that no matter how much we strive for order, there is always an element of unpredictability that we cannot tame. His coils wrapped around the earth, a silent sentinel watching over the balance of life and death. The symbolism of Jormungandr extended beyond his physical form. He represented the cycle of creation and destruction, a cycle that is as old as time itself. Just as the serpent encircles the world, so too does the cycle of life continue, an unending loop of birth, growth, decay, and rebirth. Jormungandr's name became a reminder of this eternal cycle, a symbol of the inevitability of change. In the depths of the ocean, where light barely penetrates and the water is thick with mystery, Jormungandr found his home. The sea, with its vastness and depth, mirrored the endless possibilities and unknowns that the serpent represented. To the people of Midgard, the sight of Jormungandr's scales glinting in the water was a sight both mesmerizing and terrifying. It was said that to look into his eyes was to see the end of all things, a glimpse into the future that no mortal was meant to behold. Yet, there was a strange beauty in Jormungandr's existence. He was a creature of the night, a being who thrived in the shadows and the depths. His name, a name that spoke of greatness and monstrosity, carried with it a sense of inevitability. It was a name that reminded us of the power of nature, the forces that shape our world and our destinies. The name Jormungandr also carried a sense of destiny. From the moment he was born, it was known that he would play a crucial role in Ragnarok, the final battle where the gods would meet their end. Jormungandr's destiny was written in the stars, his name a beacon of what was to come. The gods themselves feared him, for they knew that his rise would signal the end of their reign. Yet, they also understood that he was a necessary part of the cycle, a force that would bring about a new beginning. In the stories and songs passed down through generations, the name Jormungandr became a symbol of both fear and respect. It was a name whispered in awe, a reminder of the forces that lie beyond our control. The tales of his battles with Thor, the Thunder God, were legendary, each clash a testament to the struggle between order and chaos, light and dark. Jormungandr's name also became a symbol of resilience. Despite being cast into the depths of the ocean, he grew stronger, his power and influence spreading far and wide. He was a reminder that even in the face of adversity, there is strength to be found. His name became a symbol of the enduring spirit, the ability to rise and grow even in the harshest of conditions. In the end, the name Jormungandr was more than just a title for a great serpent. It was a name that carried with it the weight of the world, a name that spoke of the forces that shape our lives and our destinies. It was a name that reminded us of the beauty and terror of the unknown, the cycle of life and death, and the power of resilience. And as long as the stories of Jormungandr are told, his name will continue to echo through the ages, a symbol of the great and untamed forces of the universe. 
In the heart of the Norse cosmos, where the very fabric of reality was woven with threads of myth and magic, there existed a vast, sprawling universe known as the Nine Worlds. Each world was a unique realm, filled with its own landscapes, creatures, and stories. But among these worlds, there was one being whose presence cast a shadow over them all, a serpent so immense that his very existence was a testament to the power and mystery of the cosmos. This was Jormungandr, the Midgard Serpent. Jormungandr's place in the Norse cosmos was not just a matter of physical location, it was a symbol of his influence and the role he played in the grand design of the universe. The nine worlds were connected by Yggdrasil, the world tree, a mighty ash tree that reached into the heavens and extended its roots into the depths of existence. Yggdrasil was the axis upon which the cosmos turned, and within its embrace, the nine worlds found their place. It was said that the branches of Yggdrasil stretched over all the worlds, while its roots drank from the well of wisdom, the well of fate, and the well of life. In this cosmic order, Jormungandr encircled Midgard, the world of men. The gods had cast him into the great ocean that surrounded Midgard, hoping to contain his power and prevent him from wreaking havoc. But Jormungandr was no ordinary serpent. He was destined to grow and grow until he encompassed the entire world, biting his own tail in a never-ending loop. This image of the serpent biting its tail, known as the Ouroboros, became a powerful symbol of the cycle of life and death, creation and destruction. It represented the idea that everything is connected and that the end is always intertwined with the beginning. The ocean, vast and deep, became Jormungandr's domain. It was a place of mystery and danger, a realm where the sea serpent could hide his massive form and watch over the world. The waters of the ocean were both a barrier and a bridge, separating the land from the unknown depths beyond. Sailors and fishermen who ventured too far from shore spoke of a great beast lurking beneath the waves, a creature whose eyes glowed like fire in the dark waters. These tales were filled with fear and awe, for to see Jormungandr was to glimpse a force of nature beyond human comprehension. In the Norse cosmos, the ocean was more than just a body of water. It was a metaphor for the unknown, the uncontrollable forces that lay beyond the reach of mortal hands. Jormungandr, as the guardian of this boundary, was a symbol of the mysteries that lie hidden beneath the surface of our world. He was the keeper of secrets, the embodiment of the wild and untamed aspects of nature. His presence in the ocean was a reminder of the depths that humanity could never fully understand or conquer. But Jormungandr's influence extended beyond the ocean. As he encircled Midgard, he became a part of the cosmic balance. His very existence was a reminder of the fragile equilibrium that held the nine worlds together. The serpent was a force of chaos, a being whose power was both feared and revered. He was a constant threat, a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. The gods knew that Jormungandr's rise would signal the end of days, the arrival of Ragnarok, the final battle where the cosmos would be torn apart and reborn. Despite the fear he inspired, there was also a strange beauty to Jormungandr's role in the cosmos. He was a part of the grand tapestry, a piece of the puzzle that made up the Norse universe. His presence was a reminder that even the most terrifying forces of nature have their place in the world. Jormungandr was not evil, he was a force of nature, a being whose existence was necessary for the balance of the cosmos. The nine worlds themselves were a diverse and wondrous collection of realms, each with its own inhabitants and landscapes. Asgard was the home of the Asir gods, a realm of splendor and power. Vanaheim was the land of the Vanir, a group of gods associated with fertility and prosperity. Alfheim was the realm of the Light Elves, beings of ethereal beauty and magic. Svartalfheim was the dark, subterranean world of the dwarves, master craftsmen and creators of wondrous artifacts. Jotunheim, the land of the giants, was a wild and rugged realm, home to beings of immense strength and size. Nivelheim, a realm of ice and cold, was a place of darkness and frost. Muspelheim, on the other hand, was a land of fire, ruled by the fire giant Surtr. Helheim, the realm of the dead, was a shadowy place ruled by Hel, the daughter of Loki and sister to Jormungandr. In this cosmic tapestry, Jormungandr's placement was a key element. He was not confined to one world, but existed on the boundaries, a bridge between the known and the unknown. 
His presence in the ocean, encircling Midgard, was a reminder of the interconnectedness of all things. The serpent's watchful eyes saw everything, and his coils touched every corner of the world. The placement of Jormungandr in the Norse cosmos was a testament to the belief in a universe filled with wonder and mystery. It was a world where the boundaries between reality and myth were blurred, where gods and monsters were real, and where the forces of nature were personified in beings like Jormungandr. The serpent's existence was a reminder of the beauty and terror of the natural world, a world that was both fragile and resilient, filled with both chaos and order. In the vast expanse of the cosmos, where worlds hung like stars in the night sky, there existed a realm known as Midgard. It was a world of mountains and rivers, forests and plains, a place where humans lived their lives under the watchful eyes of the gods. Yet, beyond the reach of mortal hands, something ancient and powerful lay coiled in the deep waters that surrounded Midgard. It was Jormungandr, the world serpent, a creature so immense and formidable that he encircled the entire world, his body forming a living boundary between the known and the unknown. Jormungandr's presence around Midgard was both a protective embrace and a looming threat. To the people of Midgard, he was a creature of legend, a being whose very existence was a reminder of the mysteries that lay beyond their understanding. The ocean, vast and deep, was his domain, a place where he could hide his massive form and watch over the world. But Jormungandr was not just a creature of the sea, he was a symbol of the untamed forces of nature, a force that could not be controlled or contained. As the world serpent, Jormungandr's encircling of Midgard had profound implications. It was said that he held his own tail in his mouth, creating a never-ending loop. This image, known as the Ouroboros, became a powerful symbol of the cycle of life and death, creation and destruction. It represented the idea that all things are interconnected, that every beginning is tied to an end, and that life is an unending cycle of renewal and decay. Jormungandr's presence reminded the people of Midgard that their world was part of a larger cosmic order, a delicate balance that could be disrupted at any moment. The ocean that Jormungandr called home was both a physical and metaphorical boundary. It separated the land from the unknown, the familiar from the mysterious. Sailors and fishermen who ventured too far from shore would tell tales of a great serpent that lurked beneath the waves, a creature whose eyes glowed with an otherworldly light. These stories were filled with awe and fear, for Jormungandr was not just a beast, he was a force of nature, a being whose presence signified the power and unpredictability of the world. Jormungandr's encircling of Midgard also had a darker implication. It was said that the serpent's rise would signal the end of days, the coming of Ragnarok, the final battle where the gods would meet their doom. In this great cosmic struggle, Jormungandr would clash with Thor, the thunder god, in a battle that would shake the very foundations of the world. The prophecy foretold that Jormungandr would spew venom into the sky and sea, poisoning the earth and causing great waves to crash upon the land. Thor, with his mighty hammer Mjolnir, would ultimately slay the serpent, but not before succumbing to the venom himself. This apocalyptic vision filled the hearts of mortals with dread, for it was a reminder of the fragility of life and the inevitability of change. Yet, despite the fear he inspired, Jormungandr was also a symbol of resilience. His ability to encircle the world and hold it in his coils spoke to the enduring nature of the cosmos. He was a reminder that even in the face of destruction, there is always the potential for rebirth. The cycle of the Ouroboros, with its endless loop, was a symbol of hope as much as it was a symbol of doom. It suggested that life would continue, that even after the end, there would be a new beginning. The people of Midgard lived their lives under the shadow of Jormungandr's presence, but they also drew strength from it. They knew that the world was a place of both beauty and terror, a place where the forces of nature could be both nurturing and destructive. Jormungandr's encircling of Midgard was a constant reminder of this duality, of the delicate balance that held the world together. It was a reminder that life was precious, that every moment was a gift to be cherished. Jormungandr's role in the Norse cosmos was not just as a monster to be feared, but as a guardian of the balance of the world. His encircling of Midgard was a testament to the interconnectedness of all things, a symbol of the forces that shape our lives and our destinies. 
The people of Midgard may have feared him, but they also respected him, for they knew that his presence was a necessary part of the cosmic order. He was a reminder that even in the face of chaos and uncertainty, there is beauty and wonder to be found in the mysteries of the world. In the end, Jormungandr's encircling of Midgard was a story of contrasts, of fear and hope, destruction and renewal, chaos and order. It was a story that spoke to the heart of the human experience, a story that reminded us of the power and majesty of the world we inhabit. And as long as the tales of Jormungandr are told, his presence will continue to be felt, a living reminder of the enduring cycle of life and the endless possibilities that lie beyond the horizon. And the ancient tales whispered through the winds of the north, the vast expanse of oceans and waters held a mystical significance. They were more than just physical barriers, they were the lifeblood of the cosmos, flowing with untold stories and ancient power. At the heart of these waters was Jormungandr, the world serpent, whose immense form curled around the very earth, becoming a living embodiment of the ocean's boundless depths and mysteries. The oceans in Norse mythology were not merely bodies of water, they were the cradle of existence, the womb from which life emerged. They represented the unknown, the uncharted territories that lay beyond the familiar shores of Midgard. To the Norse people, the sea was a place of both beauty and terror, a realm of great potential and profound danger. It was a force of nature that could be both nurturing and destructive, capable of giving life and taking it away in the same breath. Jormungandr, the great serpent who encircled Midgard, was the living symbol of these dualities. His presence in the ocean was a constant reminder of the power and unpredictability of the waters. Born from the union of Loki and the giantess Angerboda, Jormungandr was cast into the ocean by the gods, where he grew to an unimaginable size. As he lay in the depths, his body became one with the waves, a force of nature that stretched across the horizon. His eyes, glowing with an otherworldly light, watched over the world, a sentinel of the deep. The ocean, with its ceaseless tides and hidden depths, mirrored Jormungandr's nature. It was a place of constant change, where calm waters could swiftly turn into raging storms. The sea's depths were a mystery, filled with creatures and landscapes unseen by mortal eyes. It was a realm where the boundary between life and death, creation and destruction, was fluid and ever-changing. Jormungandr, as the guardian of this realm, was a symbol of the ocean's power, a power that was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. In the tales of the Norse, water was often seen as a source of wisdom and knowledge. The Well of Mimir, one of the three wells at the roots of Yggdrasil, was a place where the gods sought wisdom. Odin himself sacrificed an eye to drink from its waters, gaining insight into the mysteries of the cosmos. This connection between water and wisdom was echoed in the figure of Jormungandr. As the serpent encircling the world, he represented the hidden knowledge of the ocean's depths, the secrets that lay beneath the waves. The sea was also a symbol of the cyclical nature of existence. The tides, with their rhythmic rise and fall, reflected the endless cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Jormungandr's Ouroboros-like form, biting his own tail, embodied this cycle. It was a reminder that all things are connected, that every ending is also a beginning. The ocean, with its unending ebb and flow, was a metaphor for the eternal cycle of the cosmos. Yet, the waters in Norse mythology were not just a symbol of the unknown, they were also a source of life and sustenance. The rivers that flowed from the well of Virgilmer nourished the roots of Yggdrasil, the world tree. These waters, pure and life-giving, were a symbol of the sustenance that the earth provided. In this sense, Jormungandr's presence in the ocean was not just a symbol of destruction, but also of creation. His body, vast and serpentine, was a part of the natural order, a force that maintained the balance of the world. The ocean was a place of transformation, a realm where the boundaries between the physical and the spiritual were blurred. In the depths of the sea, souls of the dead were believed to find their way to Helheim, the realm of the dead. This journey across the waters was a passage from one world to another, a crossing from life into the afterlife. Jormungandr, as the guardian of the ocean, was a gatekeeper of this transition, a being who existed on the threshold between the known and the unknown. The Norse people revered the ocean as a force of nature that was both nurturing and fearsome. 
It was a place of beauty, filled with shimmering waters and vibrant life, but also a place of danger, where storms could rise without warning and the depths could swallow even the bravest of sailors. Jormungandr, as the embodiment of the ocean, was a reflection of these dualities. He was a creature of immense power, capable of causing great destruction, but also a symbol of the natural world's beauty and mystery. In the myths, Jormungandr's fate was tied to the end of days, to Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. It was foretold that the great serpent would rise from the ocean, unleashing his venom upon the world. The sea, once a source of life, would become a force of destruction, flooding the earth and heralding the end of the old world. Yet, even in this destruction, there was the promise of renewal, the birth of a new world from the ashes of the old. Jormungandr's story, like the ocean itself, was a tale of contrasts, of creation and destruction, life and death, chaos and order. It was a reminder of the power and majesty of the natural world, of the mysteries that lay hidden beneath the surface of the waters. The oceans and waters in Norse mythology were more than just a setting for stories, they were a vital part of the cosmos, a reflection of the cycles of life that govern all existence. And at the heart of these waters was Jormungandr, the world serpent, a being whose presence was both a blessing and a curse, a symbol of the eternal dance of life and death. In the shadowed corners of Asgard, whispers of a prophecy echoed through the halls of the gods. It was said that the children of Loki, born of the trickster god and the giantess Angerboda, would bring about the end of the world. These children, feared and misunderstood, bore the weight of their lineage like a curse. Among them was Jormungandr, the mighty serpent destined to encircle the world. Alongside him were his siblings, the monstrous wolf Fenrir and the enigmatic Hel, ruler of the underworld. The gods, in their wisdom and fear, decided that these beings, with their immense power and potential for chaos, could not be left unchecked. The gods' actions against Loki's children were as inevitable as the rising tide, a tragic tale of destiny and fear. Jormungandr, Fenrir, and Hel were not mere creatures, they were symbols of the uncontrollable forces of nature, forces that even the gods could not fully comprehend. As they grew, so too did the gods' unease. The weight of the prophecy hung heavy in the air, and the gods knew they had to act, not out of malice, but out of a desperate need to protect the world they had created. Jormungandr, the serpent, was the first to face the gods' judgment. His immense size and growing power terrified them, and they feared that he would one day bring about the destruction foretold. In a moment of decision, they cast him into the ocean that surrounded Midgard. The ocean, vast and deep, became Jormungandr's prison and home. There, he grew to such an immense size that he encircled the entire world, biting his own tail in a perpetual loop. The sight of the great serpent, hidden beneath the waves, was a constant reminder of the gods' fear and the prophecy that loomed over them. Fenrir, the mighty wolf, was next. He was a beast of unparalleled strength, and his ferocity knew no bounds. The gods, wary of his potential, tried to bind him with chains, but Fenrir broke free time and time again. It was only with the creation of a magical ribbon, forged from impossible ingredients, sound of a cat's footfall, beard of a woman, breath of a fish, and roots of a mountain, that they were able to bind him. Even then, Fenrir's binding was a painful affair. The gods tricked him into putting on the ribbon, and as they tightened it, Fenrir, realizing the deceit, snapped at them. Only the god Tyr, brave and honorable, dared to place his hand in the wolf's mouth as a sign of trust. When the binding was complete, Fenrir bit down, severing Tyr's hand. The wolf's howl of betrayal echoed through the realms, a chilling reminder of the god's ruthless pragmatism. Hel, the daughter of Loki with a face half beautiful and half dead, was sent to the underworld. There, she was given dominion over the dead, a realm that bore her name. Hel's rule was both a punishment and a recognition of her power. She was tasked with ruling over those who did not die in battle, a somber responsibility that mirrored her own dual nature. In the cold and shadowed halls of Helheim, she sat on her throne, a queen over the souls of the departed. Her presence, shrouded in mystery, was a stark contrast to the vibrant realms of the living. These actions, taken by the gods, were not just measures of control, but also acts of desperation. 
They were driven by a prophecy that foretold their own end, a prophecy that said Loki's children would bring about Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. The gods' fear of this impending doom led them to take drastic actions, actions that were as much about self-preservation as they were about maintaining the order of the cosmos. Yet, in binding the children of Loki, the gods also bound themselves to a fate they could not escape. Jormungandr's encircling of the world was a silent, ever-present threat. Fenrir's binding was a testament to the gods' willingness to sacrifice, even when it cost them dearly. And Hel's rule over the underworld was a reminder of the inevitability of death and the cycle of life. The gods' actions, born out of fear and necessity, became a part of the prophecy they sought to prevent. The story of the binding of Loki's children is not just a tale of fear and control, it is a story of inevitability and fate. It speaks to the complex relationship between the gods and the forces of nature they sought to control. Jormungandr, Fenrir, and Hel were not villains, they were beings caught in the web of prophecy and destiny, beings whose very existence was a challenge to the gods' power. The gods, in their actions, demonstrated the lengths they would go to protect their world, even if it meant sacrificing their own. The tale of the binding of Loki's children is a story of tragedy and resilience. It is a reminder that even in the face of fear and uncertainty, there is a strength in confronting the inevitable. The gods, in their wisdom, sought to protect the world, but in doing so, they also set the stage for their own downfall. The actions they took were both a defense and a defiance, a testament to the complex nature of their existence and the delicate balance they sought to maintain. In the heart of Asgard, where the gods and giants wove their fates, there arose a tale of strength, deception, and destiny. It was a story that began with a seemingly simple challenge, but it was laden with significance and mystery. Thor, the mighty god of thunder, renowned for his strength and valor, faced an unexpected and extraordinary test. This was no ordinary test of strength, it was a cunning trick played by the giant Utgard Loki, who sought to humble the god. The stage was set, and the challenge appeared innocuous, a simple act of lifting a cat. But beneath this facade lay a cosmic secret, for the cat was not what it seemed. It was none other than Jormungandr, the world serpent, disguised and concealed in a form far too small to hint at its true nature. Thor, with his powerful build and indomitable spirit, was confident as always. He had faced giants, trolls, and other monstrous beings without fear. The task seemed trivial, a mere cat, small and unassuming. But as he approached the creature, there was something uncanny in its gaze, something ancient and knowing. The cat sat calmly, its eyes glinting with a strange light, as if it held secrets far beyond the comprehension of gods and men. As Thor bent to lift the cat, he felt an unexpected resistance. His strong arms, used to wielding the mighty hammer Mjolnir, strained against the weight. It was as though the cat was anchored to the earth itself. Thor's muscles bulged, and his face flushed with effort. He gripped the cat's fur and lifted, but the creature's form barely budged. There was an eerie stillness in the room, the kind that makes hearts race and breaths quicken. The gods and giants watched in stunned silence, their eyes wide with disbelief. The room seemed to shrink around Thor as he summoned all his strength. The air grew thick with tension, each heartbeat pounding like a drum. The cat's body, so small and slender, seemed to contain a weight far beyond its size. Thor's arms trembled, and sweat beaded on his brow. With a roar of determination, he pulled with all his might, his face contorted in a mixture of exertion and frustration. And then, slowly, almost imperceptibly, one of the cat's paws left the ground. In that moment, the truth began to dawn on those who watched. This was no ordinary cat, this was a creature of immense power, a being whose true form defied the laws of nature. Thor's face, usually so confident and fierce, showed a flicker of doubt. He gritted his teeth and continued to lift, inch by inch, until finally, the cat's paw hovered in the air. But that was all Thor could manage. No matter how hard he tried, he could not lift the creature further. The realization hit like a wave, washing over everyone present. The cat was Jormungandr, the serpent that encircled the world, hidden in a guise of utter simplicity. The weight Thor felt was the weight of the oceans, the mountains, the very earth itself. Utgard Loki, 
with a sly smile, revealed the truth. He had disguised the world serpent as a cat, knowing that even Thor, with all his might, could not fully lift the creature that encompassed the entirety of Midgard. Thor's failure was not a testament to his lack of strength, but rather a recognition of the vastness of Jormungandr's power. The God of Thunder had faced many challenges, but this one was different. It was not a battle of brute force, but a lesson in humility. Thor, despite his strength and valor, could not overcome the weight of the world. The encounter left a mark on him, a reminder of the limits even gods must face. As Thor released the cat, there was a moment of quiet reflection. The cat, now revealed as Jormungandr, returned to its place with a quiet grace, as if acknowledging the secret shared between it and the god. The onlookers, still reeling from the revelation, felt a chill in the air. The encounter had been a reminder of the thin veil between the known and the unknown, the mortal and the divine. For Thor, this encounter was a lesson in the vastness of the cosmos and the mysteries that lay beyond even his understanding. The great serpent, hidden in plain sight, was a symbol of the world's interconnectedness, a reminder that strength alone could not conquer all. The gods and giants, witnesses to this extraordinary event, were left with a sense of awe and wonder. The story of Thor's first encounter with Jormungandr, disguised as a cat, became a legend, a tale told and retold through the ages. It was a story that spoke of strength and humility, of the power hidden beneath the surface of the ordinary. It was a reminder that even the mightiest of gods could be brought to their knees by the simplest of creatures. And in the quiet moments, when the world seemed vast and unknowable, the memory of that encounter lingered, a testament to the mysteries of the universe and the lessons learned by the God of Thunder. In the icy embrace of the north, where the sky met the sea, a tale of courage and destiny was born. It was on a day shrouded in mist and mystery that Thor, the God of Thunder, found himself in the company of the giant Hymir. Their destination was the vast ocean, a place of endless depths and hidden dangers. Thor, with his fierce determination and unyielding spirit, sought to prove his strength once more, and what better way to do so than by catching the greatest fish of all, the mighty Jormungandr, the world serpent. As they set out on their fishing trip, the air was thick with an unspoken tension. The boat, sturdy but small, seemed dwarfed by the vastness of the ocean around them. Hymir, with his towering frame and stern visage, rode with a practiced ease, while Thor sat opposite, his eyes scanning the horizon. The sea was calm, its surface smooth like glass, reflecting the gray sky above. But beneath that calm lay a world teeming with life, a world that held the key to a destiny far greater than anyone could imagine. Hymir, knowing the perilous nature of their quest, offered Thor the use of his own bait, but Thor had other plans. With a determined glint in his eye, he took out the head of Hymir's largest ox, a gruesome and fitting bait for the beast he sought to catch. Hymir watched in silence, a mixture of respect and apprehension in his gaze. There was something about Thor's resolve, an unbreakable will that seemed to draw the giant into this fateful endeavor. As they reached the deep waters, far from the safety of the shore, Thor prepared the bait and cast his line into the ocean's depths. The waves gently rocked the boat, a lullaby of the sea that belied the danger lurking below. Time seemed to stretch, every moment a heartbeat in the quiet vastness. Then, suddenly, there was a pull, a force so strong it nearly yanked Thor off his feet. The boat rocked violently, and Hymir's eyes widened in shock. This was no ordinary catch. Thor gripped the fishing line with all his might, his muscles straining against the immense pull. The tension in the air was palpable, a living thing that wrapped around them both. The sea seemed to hold its breath as the struggle began. Thor's face was a mask of concentration and effort, sweat beating on his brow. He pulled with all his strength, the veins in his arms standing out like cords. The line stretched and creaked, a thin barrier between them and the unknown terror below. Then, with a sudden surge, the great serpent emerged from the depths. Jormungandr, the world serpent, broke through the surface, his massive form towering above the boat. His scales, dark and glistening, reflected the dim light, and his eyes burned with an ancient fury. Thor's grip tightened, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. The god and the serpent locked eyes, a silent acknowledgement of their shared destiny. 
Jormungandr's maw opened wide, revealing rows of sharp teeth, and a low, rumbling growl reverberated through the air. Hymir, paralyzed by fear, could only watch as the epic struggle unfolded. Thor, undaunted, stood his ground. With a roar of determination, he pulled with all his might, determined to bring the serpent into the boat. The sea roiled around them, waves crashing against the sides of the boat, as if the ocean itself were trying to reclaim its monstrous child. The sky darkened, clouds swirling ominously above, mirroring the chaos below. In that moment, Thor raised his hammer, Mjolnir, preparing to strike the beast down. His eyes blazed with the fury of a storm, and his heart pounded with the thrill of the battle. But before he could deliver the fatal blow, Hymir, in a fit of panic, cut the line. The tension snapped, and Jormungandr, freed from the binding, slipped back into the ocean's depths with a final, menacing hiss. The waves calmed, the sky cleared, and the sea returned to its deceptive tranquility, as if the great struggle had never happened. Thor stood there, Mjolnir still raised, a look of disbelief and frustration on his face. The chance to end the World Serpent had slipped through his fingers, and he could only watch as the ripples faded into the distance. Hymir, still shaken, could barely meet Thor's gaze. He had acted out of fear, and in doing so, had altered the course of fate. The silence that followed was heavy with unspoken words, a quiet acknowledgement of what had been lost and what still lay ahead. The boat, now a small dot on the vast ocean, slowly made its way back to shore. Thor, his heart heavy with the weight of the encounter, sat in silence. The sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the water, a stark contrast to the storm that had just passed. Hymir, still wary, rode in quiet contemplation. They both knew that the battle was far from over, that the World Serpent would one day rise again, and that their destinies were forever intertwined. As they reached the shore, the world seemed to exhale, releasing the tension of the encounter. Thor stepped onto solid ground, his mind replaying the events of the day. The encounter with Jormungandr had been a test of strength and courage, a reminder of the forces that lay beyond even the gods' control. It was a story that would be told for generations, a tale of a fishing trip that became a legendary battle between a god and a monster. In the end, Thor and Hymir parted ways, each carrying the memory of the great serpent and the near confrontation with destiny. The ocean, vast and endless, continued its eternal dance, hiding its secrets beneath the waves. And somewhere in its depths, Jormungandr waited, biding his time, knowing that the final battle was yet to come. The fishing trip had been more than just a test of strength, it was a glimpse into the future, a reminder of the inevitable clash between Thor and the World Serpent, a clash that would shake the very foundations of the world. In the depths of the ocean, where light barely penetrates and silence reigns, lies a creature of immense power and mystery. Jormungandr, the World Serpent, is a symbol of chaos, a force of nature that embodies destruction and unpredictability. This colossal serpent, encircling the world with its body, is not just a physical entity but a representation of the wild, untamed forces that lie beyond human control. In the tales of Norse mythology, Jormungandr is more than a monster, it is the embodiment of chaos itself, a reminder of the fragile balance between order and disorder. The presence of Jormungandr in the cosmos is a constant reminder of the precariousness of existence. The serpent's enormous body, coiled around Midgard, signifies the boundaries of the known world and the forces that lie beyond. Its very existence is a threat, a lurking danger that can unleash destruction at any moment. The tales tell of Jormungandr's inevitable clash with Thor, a battle that will bring about the end of the world, Ragnarok. In this cataclysmic event, the serpent will rise from the ocean, its presence heralding the collapse of the known order. The image of Jormungandr, with its vast coils and venomous fangs, evokes a sense of dread and awe. It is a creature that defies understanding, its motives and nature inscrutable. The serpent's role as a symbol of chaos is not just about physical destruction, but also about the psychological turmoil it represents. The fear of the unknown, the anxiety of what lies beneath the surface, these are the emotions that Jormungand stirs in the hearts of those who contemplate its existence. It is a reminder of the uncontrollable aspects of life, the wild forces that can upend the world in an instant. 
Jorman Gandru's association with water, the ever-changing and unpredictable element, further emphasizes its connection to chaos. The ocean, with its vast and uncharted depths, mirrors the serpent's nature. Like the sea, Jormungandr is boundless, its movements capable of causing tsunamis and storms. The serpent's ability to poison the waters with its venom speaks to the contamination of order by chaos, the blurring of boundaries between safety and danger. In this way, Jormungandr represents the disruption of harmony, the intrusion of the uncontrollable into the structured world. The stories of Jormungandr's interactions with the gods highlight the tension between order and chaos. Thor's encounters with the serpent, from the fishing trip with Hymir to their final battle at Ragnarok, symbolize the struggle to maintain order in the face of overwhelming chaos. Thor, the protector of humanity and the embodiment of strength, is pitted against Jormungandr, the agent of destruction. This cosmic struggle reflects the eternal conflict between stability and upheaval, a battle that is as much internal as it is external. The serpent's existence also touches on the idea of fate, a key concept in Norse mythology. Jormungandr's role in the prophecy of Ragnarok underscores the inevitability of chaos. No matter how much one tries to maintain order, chaos is an intrinsic part of the universe. The serpent's rise at the end of time is not just a physical event, but a metaphor for the cyclical nature of existence. Just as Jormungandr encircles the world, so too does chaos enclose the cosmos, an ever-present force that cannot be escaped. In many ways, Jormungandr is a reflection of the human condition. The serpent's dual nature, both a part of the world and a threat to it, mirrors the duality within humanity. The capacity for creation and destruction, for order and chaos, exists within all beings. Jormungandr's presence in the myths serves as a reminder of this duality, a cautionary tale about the consequences of unchecked power and the delicate balance that must be maintained. The world serpent's symbolism extends beyond the physical realm to touch on philosophical and existential questions. It challenges the notion of absolute control and the illusion of permanence. Jormungandr, with its immense size and destructive potential, embodies the idea that chaos is not just an external force, but an inherent part of life. It is the unpredictability of existence, the ever-present possibility of change and disruption. As a symbol of chaos, Jormungandr resonates with a universal truth that life is unpredictable and uncontrollable. The serpent's looming presence in the mythology serves as a constant reminder of this reality. It teaches that while order can be sought, chaos is always waiting, lurking beneath the surface. The tales of Jormungandr remind us of the importance of resilience and adaptability in the face of the unknown. In the end, Jormungandr is more than just a monster in the Norse pantheon. It is a profound symbol of the chaotic forces that shape the world and the cosmos. Its story is a testament to the complexity of existence and the inevitability of change. The world serpent, with its terrifying presence and mysterious nature, continues to captivate and challenge, serving as a powerful metaphor for the chaos that lies at the heart of all things. In the depths of the ocean, where the sky meets the sea and time itself seems to stand still, lies a creature of immense power and mystery, Jormungandr, the world serpent. This colossal serpent, whose body encircles the earth, biting its own tail, evokes a powerful symbol found across cultures and ages, the Ouroboros. The Ouroboros, a serpent or dragon devouring its own tail, is a timeless representation of the eternal cycle of life, death, and rebirth. In Jormungandr, this ancient symbol finds a potent manifestation, encapsulating the endless cycle of creation and destruction that governs the cosmos. The image of Jormungandr, with its tail clasped in its jaws, is a haunting reminder of the universe's cyclical nature. The serpent's form is an unbroken loop, a perfect circle that has no beginning and no end. This endless loop symbolizes the idea that everything is interconnected, that all things are part of a continuous process of transformation. Life flows into death, and death flows into life, just as the serpent's mouth meets its tail. Jormungandr, as an Ouroboros, is a powerful emblem of this eternal process, a reminder that all things are bound together in an unending cycle. The concept of the Ouroboros and its relation to Jormungandr carries deep philosophical and existential implications. 
It speaks to the idea of unity and wholeness, the idea that all things are one and that the universe is a single, living entity. The serpent's act of consuming itself suggests a process of self-renewal and regeneration. In devouring its own tail, Jormungandr is both the creator and the destroyer, embodying the duality of existence. This self-consuming cycle reflects the constant flux of the cosmos, where creation and destruction are two sides of the same coin. The Ouroboros, and its connection to Jormungandr, also represents the idea of eternity. The endless circle of the serpent is a symbol of the infinite, the timeless flow of existence that transcends human understanding. It is a reminder that life, in all its forms, is an unending journey, a constant process of growth and change. In Jormungandr, we see the embodiment of this eternal journey, a force that has existed since the beginning of time and will continue to exist until its end. The serpent's unbroken loop is a symbol of the continuity of life, a testament to the enduring nature of the universe. The mythology of Jormungandr and the symbolism of the Ouroboros also highlight the theme of balance and harmony. The serpent's encirclement of the earth represents the delicate equilibrium that sustains the world. Jormungandr, in its role as both protector and destroyer, maintains this balance. It is a force of nature that ensures the continued flow of life and death, creation and destruction. The Ouroboros, in its endless cycle, reflects this balance, reminding us that all things must come to an end so that new beginnings can arise. The relationship between Jormungandr and the Ouroboros also speaks to the inevitability of fate. The serpent's presence in the cosmos is a reminder that all things are bound by the cycles of time. Just as Jormungandr encircles the world, so too does fate encircle all things. The Ouroboros, with its self-consuming form, symbolizes the inescapable nature of destiny. It is a reminder that all things are interconnected, that the past, present, and future are all part of a single, unbroken chain. In Jormungandr, we see the embodiment of this inexorable cycle, a force that cannot be escaped or avoided. The symbolism of the Ouroboros, as represented by Jormungandr, also touches on the idea of self-realization and transformation. The serpent's act of consuming itself is a metaphor for the journey of self-discovery, the process of understanding oneself and one's place in the universe. It represents the idea of returning to one's origins, of understanding the true nature of existence. In Jormungandr, we see a reflection of this journey, a force that embodies the process of self-realization and transformation. The Ouroboros, in its endless cycle, is a symbol of this journey, a reminder that all things must return to their origins to be reborn anew. In the end, the connection between Jormungandr and the Ouroboros is a powerful symbol of the eternal cycle of life and death. The serpent, with its unbroken loop, represents the continuity of existence, the unending flow of time. It is a reminder that all things are part of a larger, interconnected whole, that life and death are two sides of the same coin. The Ouroboros, as embodied by Jormungandr, is a symbol of the eternal journey of self-discovery and transformation, a reminder that all things must come to an end so that new beginnings can arise. In the myth of Jormungandr, we find a reflection of the timeless wisdom of the Ouroboros, a symbol that transcends cultures and ages. It is a reminder that the universe is an unending cycle, a constant process of creation and destruction. Jormungandr, the world serpent, is a powerful embodiment of this eternal cycle, a force that encapsulates the mystery and wonder of existence. Through the image of the Ouroboros, we are reminded of the unity and interconnectedness of all things, the endless journey of life and death that defines the cosmos. In the silent depths of the ocean, where the light fades and mysteries abound, there exists a colossal being whose presence is both awe-inspiring and terrifying. Jormungandr, the world serpent, is more than just a mythical creature, it is a symbol of the cycle of life and death. Encircling Midgard with its immense body, Jormungandr represents the unending flow of existence, the eternal dance of beginnings and endings that define the cosmos. The serpent's presence reminds us that life and death are not separate but intertwined, part of a continuous cycle that binds all things together. Jormungandr's role in the cycle of life and death is a powerful and profound concept. The serpent, 
with its tail in its mouth, forms a perfect circle, symbolizing the unbroken chain of existence. This image is a stark reminder that life is cyclical, that every end marks a new beginning. The serpent's endless loop captures the essence of renewal, the idea that from death comes life, and from life, death. It is a cycle that repeats infinitely, a testament to the ever-changing nature of the universe. The mythology surrounding Jormungandr is rich with themes of renewal and transformation. The serpent's association with the ocean, a vast and mysterious expanse, underscores its connection to the primal forces of life. The sea, with its ebb and flow, mirrors the cycle of life and death. Just as the tides rise and fall, so too does life wax and wane. Jormungandr, as a creature of the ocean, embodies this rhythm, a living symbol of the cycles that govern all existence. The serpent's coiled form suggests a latent energy, a potential for both creation and destruction. In the stories of Norse mythology, Jormungandr's presence is a harbinger of change. The serpent's interactions with the gods, especially with Thor, highlight the inevitability of death and the promise of rebirth. The prophesied battle between Thor and Jormungandr at Ragnarok, the end of the world, is a dramatic manifestation of this cycle. As the serpent rises from the depths, it signifies the breaking of old orders and the emergence of new realities. The clash between Thor and Jormungandr is not just a battle of strength, but a symbolic representation of the eternal struggle between life and death. Jormungandr's role as a symbol of the cycle of life and death also touches on the theme of fate. The serpent's existence is bound to the prophecy of Ragnarok, a destiny that it cannot escape. This inescapable fate underscores the idea that life and death are predetermined, a part of the cosmic order. Jormungandr's inevitable rise at the end of time serves as a reminder that death is not an end, but a transition, a gateway to new beginnings. The serpent's life, death, and rebirth are all part of a larger pattern, a cycle that continues endlessly. The image of Jormungandr, encircling the world with its vast body, also speaks to the interconnectedness of all life. The serpent's form, with its tail in its mouth, symbolizes the unity of all things, the idea that life and death are not isolated events, but interconnected processes. This interconnectedness is a fundamental aspect of the cycle of life and death. Every life is connected to others, and every death creates the space for new life. Jormungandr, in its encompassing form, represents this web of connections, a reminder that we are all part of the same cosmic cycle. In contemplating Jormungandr's role in the cycle of life and death, we are reminded of the impermanence of all things. The serpent's presence in the myths serves as a powerful metaphor for the transient nature of life. Just as Jormungandr will eventually rise from the ocean to bring about the end of the world, so too must all things come to an end. This inevitability is not something to be feared, but embraced as a natural part of existence. The cycle of life and death, as represented by Jormungandr, is a beautiful and necessary process that ensures the continuity of life. The symbolism of Jormungandr also extends to the idea of balance. The serpent's encirclement of Midgard, the world of humans, represents the delicate balance that sustains life. Jormungandr's role in the cycle of life and death is a reminder that balance is crucial for the harmony of the cosmos. The serpent's dual nature, as both a force of life and a harbinger of death, embodies this balance. It is a force that maintains the equilibrium between creation and destruction, ensuring that the cycle of life continues uninterrupted. In the mythology of Jormungandr, we find a reflection of the profound truths about existence. The serpent's endless loop is a powerful symbol of the cycle of life and death, a reminder that all things are bound by this eternal process. Jormungandr's role in this cycle is both awe-inspiring and humbling, a testament to the mysteries of life and the inevitability of death. As we consider the story of Jormungandr, we are reminded of our place in the cosmos, a part of the great cycle of life and death that connects all things. In the vast tapestry of Norse mythology, the relationship between the Asir gods and Jormungandr, the world serpent, stands out as a tale of enmity and destiny. From the moment the gods learned of Jormungandr's existence, an unspoken tension arose, foreshadowing the ultimate clash between divine order and chaotic power. This tension shaped the fates of gods and mortals alike, weaving a complex web of fear, respect, 
and inevitability. The Asir, the pantheon of gods who resided in Asgard, saw Jormungandr as a symbol of chaos, a force that threatened the very fabric of their world. The serpent, born from the union of Loki and the giantess Andraboda, was destined to be an adversary to the gods. His immense size and power made him a formidable presence, capable of challenging even the mightiest of the Asir. The gods knew that Jormungandr's existence posed a threat to the balance they sought to maintain, and this knowledge filled them with unease. The story of Jormungandr and the Asir is not one of simple antagonism, but of a complex interplay between two forces bound by destiny. The gods, aware of the prophecy that foretold the end of days, viewed Jormungandr as an inevitable harbinger of Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. This knowledge cast a shadow over their interactions with the serpent, coloring their every encounter with a sense of fatalism. They knew that their fates were intertwined with his, that their destinies would ultimately collide in a final, cataclysmic battle. The enmity between the Asir and Jormungandr was palpable, yet it was not born of hatred but of a recognition of the serpent's power. The gods respected Jormungandr for his strength and the role he played in the cosmic balance. They understood that he was not merely a monster to be vanquished, but a crucial part of the world's cycle. This respect was evident in their caution, and the way they approached their dealings with the serpent. They knew that to challenge him was to challenge the very forces of nature. One of the most iconic moments in the relationship between Jormungandr and the Asir is the tale of Thor's fishing expedition with the giant Hymir. In this story, Thor, the god of thunder and one of the mightiest of the Asir, sets out to catch Jormungandr from the depths of the ocean. The image of Thor, wielding his mighty hammer Mjolnir, standing face to face with the colossal serpent, captures the essence of the struggle between the gods and the forces of chaos. It is a moment of confrontation, a meeting of two opposing forces destined to clash. In this encounter, we see the tension and fear that Jormungandr inspires in the gods. Thor's determination to face the serpent reflects the Asir's resolve to uphold their order against the encroaching chaos. The struggle between Thor and Jormungandr is a microcosm of the larger conflict between the Asir and the forces they sought to control. It is a battle of wills, a test of strength and courage that foreshadows the ultimate confrontation at Ragnarok. The relationship between the Asir and Jormungandr is also marked by a sense of inevitability. The gods knew that their attempts to control or defeat the serpent were ultimately futile, that his existence was tied to the very structure of the cosmos. This inevitability imbued their interactions with a sense of tragic grandeur. They were not just fighting a physical foe, but grappling with the inescapable forces of fate. In their dealings with Jormungandr, the Asir were constantly reminded of their own mortality, of the limits of their power. Despite their enmity, the Asir and Jormungandr were bound together by a shared destiny. The serpent's existence was a constant reminder of the fragility of the god's rule, of the thin line between order and chaos. This relationship was a dance of opposing forces, a dynamic interplay that defined the world of Norse mythology. It was a relationship built on fear, respect, and an understanding of the cyclical nature of existence. As the gods prepared for the eventual arrival of Ragnarok, they knew that Jormungandr would play a pivotal role in the final battle. The serpent, as a symbol of chaos, was an embodiment of the destructive forces that would bring about the end of the world. Yet, in this destruction, there was also the promise of renewal, of a new world rising from the ashes of the old. The Asir, in their interactions with Jormungandr, were constantly reminded of this duality, of the delicate balance between creation and destruction. The tale of Jormungandr and the Asir is a story of contrasts and contradictions, of a relationship that defies simple categorization. It is a story of gods and monsters, of destiny and fate, of the eternal struggle between order and chaos. In their encounters with Jormungandr, the Asir faced not only a formidable adversary, but also their own fears and uncertainties. The serpent, with his immense power and inevitable role in the world's end, was a constant reminder of the forces beyond their control, of the cycles of life and death that govern all things. In the end, the relationship between Jormungandr and the Asir is a reflection of the larger themes of Norse mythology. It is a story of struggle and acceptance, of the recognition of the inevitable cycles that shape the cosmos. 
The enmity between the gods and the serpent is tempered by a profound respect, an acknowledgement of the essential role that Jormungandr plays in the grand design of the universe. It is a relationship that is as complex as it is tragic, a testament to the enduring power of myth and the timeless truths it conveys. The Vanir gods, often seen as the counterparts to the Asir, held a complex and intriguing view of Jormungandr, the colossal world serpent. Unlike the Asir, who saw Jormungandr primarily as a threat to their rule, the Vanir approached the serpent with a blend of awe, respect, and wariness. This nuanced perception reflected their distinct role in the Norse cosmos, where they were associated with fertility, prosperity, and the natural world. To understand the Vanir's view of Jormungandr, one must first grasp the nature of these gods. The Vanir were connected deeply with nature, and their powers often involved growth, fertility, and the rhythms of life. They were seen as gods of abundance and wisdom, more attuned to the natural forces than the Asir. This intrinsic connection to nature shaped how they perceived the world serpent. Jormungandr, a creature of the ocean's depths, embodied the raw and untamed forces of nature. His existence was a reminder of the immense and unpredictable power that lay beyond the gods' control. For the Vanir, this was not merely a threat, but a profound symbol of nature's boundless and often uncontrollable aspects. The serpent's ability to encircle Midgard, the world of humans, and his role in the cycles of life and death reflected the Vanir's understanding of nature's cyclical and often harsh reality. While the Asir saw Jormungandr as an adversary whose ultimate aim was to bring about their downfall, the Vanir perceived the serpent as a powerful entity that was both a part of and a challenge to their own dominion over nature. The Vanir respected Jormungandr not just for his size and strength, but for the role he played in the balance of the cosmos. They understood that he was not simply a force of destruction, but also a crucial part of the natural order, embodying the necessary chaos that allowed for renewal and growth. This respect was reflected in the Vanir's interactions with Jormungandr. Unlike the often confrontational approach of the Asir, the Vanir were more inclined to acknowledge the serpent's place in the grand scheme of things. They did not seek to destroy Jormungandr, but to coexist with him, recognizing that his presence was a vital part of the cosmic balance. The Vanir's approach was one of understanding and adaptation rather than outright conflict. The Vanir's perception of Jormungandr also highlighted their role in the natural order. As gods of fertility and abundance, they were deeply aware of the cycles of life and death that governed the natural world. Jormungandr's role in these cycles, as a symbol of the inescapable chaos that punctuates life, resonated with their own understanding of the natural world. The serpent's existence was a reminder of the delicate balance between creation and destruction, a balance that the Vanir themselves sought to maintain in their domain. In myths where the Vanir are involved, the serpent's presence often serves as a backdrop to the broader themes of nature and its unpredictability. For instance, the Vanir's association with wisdom and foresight allowed them to recognize the importance of embracing the chaos that Jormungandr represented. They saw the serpent as a force that, while formidable, was also an integral part of the natural world's ongoing dance. This perspective was also reflected in the way the Vanir approached the impending Battle of Ragnarok, where Jormungandr would play a pivotal role. Unlike the Asir, who viewed Ragnarok as a final confrontation with the serpent, the Vanir saw it as a necessary part of the natural cycle, an end that would pave the way for new beginnings. They understood that the destruction wrought by Jormungandr was not an end, but a transformation, a part of the continuous flow of existence that allowed for renewal and growth. The Vanir's relationship with Jormungandr was thus marked by a profound respect for the natural forces he embodied. They recognized the serpent as a powerful symbol of the natural order, a force that, while potentially destructive, was also essential for the balance of the world. This respect was not born out of fear, but from a deep understanding of the cycles that governed life and death. In their view, Jormungandr was more than just a creature of chaos. He was a vital component of the natural world, embodying the raw power and unpredictability that defined their understanding of nature. His presence was a reminder of the forces beyond their control, a testament to the grandeur and complexity of the cosmos. For the Vanir, interacting with Jormungandr was not just about confronting a threat, but about acknowledging and respecting the deeper truths of existence that he represented. 
As the Vanir faced the inevitable end times of Ragnarok, their perception of Jormungandr remained one of respect and understanding. They knew that the serpent's role was crucial to the cosmic order, that his presence was a necessary part of the cycle that would eventually lead to rebirth and renewal. This acceptance of Jormungandr's place in the grand scheme of things highlighted the Vanir's profound connection to the natural world and their role in maintaining its balance. The whispers of prophecy and the threads of fate hang heavily over Jormungandr, the world serpent. His existence is inextricably tied to the ancient predictions that foretell the end of the world, Ragnarok. These prophecies cast Jormungandr not merely as a monstrous being but as a central figure in the cosmic drama of destruction and rebirth. From the moment Jormungandr slithered into the world, it was clear that his role was more than that of a mere creature of chaos. The ancient seers and poets spoke of a time when the serpent's actions would signal the beginning of the end. The prophecies painted a picture of Jormungandr coiled around Midgard, waiting for the moment when he would release his grasp and bring about the final confrontation between the forces of order and chaos. The most haunting of these prophecies speaks of the serpent's role in Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. It is said that during this apocalyptic event, Jormungandr will rise from the ocean's depths, his colossal form causing the seas to boil and surge. His release from Midgard is a cataclysmic event, a sign that the end is near. The serpent's movement will shake the world, both literally and metaphorically, as he prepares for the final battle. Jormungandr's fate is tightly interwoven with that of the gods, especially Thor. The prophecy foretells a fateful confrontation between these two titans. Thor and Jormungandr are destined to face each other in a climactic battle where the Thunder God will strike at the serpent and Jormungandr will retaliate with venomous fury. The struggle is not just a battle of might but a symbolic representation of the clash between the forces of order and chaos, light and darkness. In the prophecies, the serpent's role extends beyond mere combat. Jormungandr's actions are seen as essential to the unfolding of fate. His very presence in the world is a living reminder of the inevitability of destruction and the cyclical nature of existence. As he coils around Midgard, his unrelenting grip symbolizes the inescapable forces that govern the cosmos. His eventual release and the ensuing chaos are not just about the end of the world but about the transformation that follows. This intertwining of fate and prophecy with Jormungandr's actions paints a portrait of inevitability and tragedy. The serpent, bound by the prophecies, is not merely acting on his own accord but fulfilling a predestined role in the grand cosmic design. His fate is sealed, not by his own choices, but by the ancient words spoken long before his time. This sense of inescapable destiny adds a layer of poignancy to his story as he becomes a symbol of the universe's unalterable plans. The prophecies also highlight the tragic nature of Jormungandr's role. He is not a villain in the traditional sense, but a necessary force in the grand scheme of things. His actions, while destructive, are essential to the cycle of life and death. The end he brings about is not an end of finality, but a prelude to renewal and rebirth. This tragic role adds depth to Jormungandr's character, making him a figure of both dread and reverence. As Ragnarok approaches, the prophecies suggest that Jormungandr's actions will be the harbingers of the final conflict. His release from Midgard, his clash with Thor, and his role in the upheaval of the natural order are all part of a grand narrative that spans the entirety of existence. The serpent's fate is a reminder of the inescapable nature of destiny, of the cycles that govern the cosmos and the roles that every being must play within them. In the end, Jormungandr's story is one of tragic inevitability. The prophecies foretell a destiny that is as grand as it is somber. The world serpent, bound by the threads of fate, is destined to play a central role in the end times, symbolizing the ultimate clash between order and chaos. His story is a poignant reminder of the cosmic balance, of the forces that shape the world, and of the inevitability of change. The prophecies ensure that Jormungand remains a figure of both awe and melancholy, a central character in the unfolding drama of existence. The air grows thick with dread as the sky darkens and the winds howl with a foreboding chill. In the final days before Ragnarok, the end times foretold by ancient prophecies, the world is riddled with ominous signs that speak of impending doom. 
These signs, etched into the fabric of existence, are both haunting and awe-inspiring, each one a piece of the grand puzzle leading to the ultimate clash between gods and giants. The first whispers of the end times begin with a chilling transformation in the natural world. The sun, once a steady beacon of warmth and light, starts to falter. Its rays grow dim, casting long shadows over the land. The once gentle seasons become erratic, shifting from biting cold to unseasonable heat. These signs are more than mere weather patterns, they are the celestial harbingers of a world on the brink of destruction. As the sun's light fades, the stars themselves begin to shift in the sky, their familiar constellations obscured by a darkening veil. The sky becomes a canvas of chaos, a reflection of the turmoil brewing below. The northern lights flicker with an eerie intensity, their colors bleeding into one another in a display of otherworldly beauty and terror. This cosmic upheaval signals the unraveling of the order that has held the universe together for eons. The earth, too, begins to betray its unease. The ground quakes with increasing frequency, and mountains groan as if awakening from a long slumber. These tremors are not just physical, but symbolic of the cosmic forces breaking free from their constraints. The land itself seems to shiver with anticipation of the chaos that is to come. Animals, usually the calmest of creatures, exhibit strange and unsettling behavior. Wolves howl with a hunger that seems to pierce the silence, their cries echoing through the night. Ravens circle in the sky, their calls sharp and frantic. The once serene animals are now harbingers of the chaos that is about to descend upon the world. Even the sea, normally a source of life and sustenance, begins to churn violently. Waves crash against the shores with a fury that reflects the unrest of the cosmos. The water seems to boil with an unnatural heat, as if preparing to unleash its wrath. The most chilling sign of all, however, is the arrival of the giants and the forces of chaos. As the prophecies foretell, the giants, those ancient enemies of the gods, begin to gather, their presence marked by the darkening of the skies and the rise of monstrous creatures. The giants, led by the fearsome Loki, march towards the battlefield of destiny, their very presence a declaration of the end times. As these signs culminate, a great cry is heard, echoing through the realms. It is the call of the Jullerhorn, blown by the god Heimdall. This horn, its sound piercing and mournful, signals the beginning of the final confrontation. Its call awakens the gods and the dead from their rest, rousing them for the battle that will decide the fate of the cosmos. Each of these signs is a reminder of the fragility of existence and the inevitability of change. They serve as both a warning and a testament to the grand narrative that has been unfolding since the beginning of time. The world stands on the brink, caught between the remnants of the old order and the onset of a new, uncertain future. The signs of the end times are not just predictions of doom, but a reflection of the intricate dance of fate and destiny. They remind us of the cyclical nature of existence, where destruction paves the way for renewal. As the world braces itself for the final battle, these omens stand as a poignant reminder of the impermanence of all things and the eternal struggle between order and chaos. In the face of these signs, the world holds its breath, waiting for the inevitable clash that will bring about the end of an era. The air is heavy with anticipation, and every shadow, every tremor, and every cry from the wild becomes a part of the grand tapestry of fate. The end times are not just an event, but a profound moment in the endless cycle of creation and destruction, a time when the old world must fall to make way for the new. The world trembles as the final battle draws near, a confrontation that will echo through the ages. The sky darkens, clouds swirling with anger as if the heavens themselves are bracing for the clash between Thor and Jormungandr, the world serpent. This is the moment where destiny reaches its apex, where two titans of myth face off in a struggle that will decide the fate of all existence. The air is electric with anticipation as Thor, the thunder god, steps onto the battlefield. His mighty hammer, Mjolnir, is gripped tightly in his hand, its power crackling with divine energy. Thor's face is set in grim determination, each muscle tensed for the battle ahead. He stands as a symbol of order and courage, ready to face the chaos embodied by Jormungandr. Jormungandr emerges from the roiling sea, his immense body unfurling with a terrifying grace. The serpent's scales glisten like blackened steel under the stormy sky. 
He rises, each movement causing the sea to churn and foam, a powerful force of nature that seems almost alive with malevolent intent. His eyes, glowing with a fierce, otherworldly light, lock onto Thor, knowing that this confrontation is long-awaited and inevitable. As the serpent draws closer, the ground beneath Thor quakes with the impact of his steps. Thunder rumbles in the heavens, matching the Thunder God's own powerful presence. The clash between Thor and Jormungandr is not just physical but symbolic, representing the eternal struggle between order and chaos, light and darkness. The first strike is a blur of motion. Thor swings Mjolnir with all his might, the hammer whistling through the air. Jormungandr's immense bolt twists and turns with surprising agility, evading the blow. The serpent's counterattack is swift, he lashes out with his tail, sending shockwaves across the battlefield. Thor narrowly dodges, feeling the wind from the serpent's strike whip past him. Each move is a testament to their strength, a display of raw power and fierce will. The battle intensifies, each combatant pushing their limits. Thor's hammer crashes against Jormungandr's scales, sending sparks flying. The serpent hisses in pain, but his retaliatory strikes are relentless. His venomous fangs snap dangerously close to Thor, each bite a potential death blow. The Thunder God stands firm, his face set in a mask of determination. He knows that the fate of the world hangs in the balance, and he cannot falter. As the struggle continues, the very elements seem to join the fray. Lightning cracks through the sky, illuminating the scene with flashes of blinding light. Thunder roars in rhythm with Thor's swings, a soundtrack to the epic confrontation. The ocean churns violently, waves crashing as if trying to swallow the combatants. The sky and sea become a canvas of chaos, reflecting the monumental clash taking place. The battle wears on, and both Thor and Jormungandr show signs of exhaustion. Each strike and counterstrike takes its toll, their immense power almost exhausted by the sheer force of their conflict. Thor's mighty blows begin to slow, his once unyielding strength starting to wane. Jormungandr, too, shows signs of fatigue, his movements growing more labored. In the final, climactic moments, Thor gathers his last reserves of strength. With a mighty roar, he lifts Mjolnir high above his head. The air crackles with energy as he channels all his power into one last, desperate strike. The hammer descends with a thunderous impact, slamming into Jormungandr with a force that shakes the very earth. The serpent lets out a deafening roar, his body arching in pain as the blow lands. The end is both magnificent and tragic. Jormungandr, mortally wounded, thrashes in a final, desperate attempt to strike back. Thor, too, is caught in the serpent's last, vengeful lunge. The two titans, locked in their final embrace, are bound by fate. The battle that has defined their existences comes to a dramatic close, each suffering the final consequences of their epic struggle. The world around them stands still, the echoes of their final clash lingering in the air. The storm abates, and a heavy silence falls over the battlefield. The fierce struggle has ended, but the impact of the battle will resonate through the ages. The Thunder God and the World Serpent, once mighty adversaries, are now a part of the eternal tapestry of fate, their stories woven into the fabric of legend and myth. The sky is a tumultuous canvas of dark, swirling clouds as the final battle, Ragnarok, unfolds in a spectacle of cataclysmic fury. The world itself seems to hold its breath, suspended in a moment of terrifying anticipation. The gods and giants clash in a storm of fire and ice, a clash that echoes through every corner of existence. At the heart of this cosmic upheaval stands Jormungandr, the world serpent, his role both pivotal and tragic in the twilight of the gods. The serpent's emergence from the depths of the ocean is nothing short of apocalyptic. As he rises, his vast, serpentine body coils and undulates with an almost malevolent grace. The sea, once a source of life, now churns with a dark fury, its waves crashing violently against the shores as if trying to escape the chaos that Jormungandr embodies. His presence alone is a harbinger of doom, a symbol of the primal chaos that is set to engulf the world. Jormungandr's role in Ragnarok is both awe-inspiring and heartbreaking. As the serpent battles the gods, his every movement is a display of immense power and fierce determination. 
His eyes, glowing with an otherworldly light, reflect the destruction he is about to unleash. The serpent's very existence is a reminder of the balance that has been shattered, the order that has been lost. Thor, the Thunder God, emerges as Jormungandr's principal adversary in this final conflict. The two titans face each other in a climactic duel that will determine the fate of the cosmos. Thor, armed with his mighty hammer, Mjolnir, stands as a symbol of defiance against the chaos that Jormungandr represents. The battle between them is not just a physical struggle but a clash of cosmic forces, a fight between order and chaos that will shape the future of the world. As the battle rages, the heavens are alight with fire and lightning. Thor and Jormungandr's blows create shockwaves that ripple through the very fabric of existence. The Thunder God's strikes are powerful and relentless, each one aimed at ending the serpent's reign of terror. Jormungandr, in turn, strikes back with venomous fury, his massive tail and sharp fangs driven by a primal rage. The struggle between them is fierce and unforgiving, a testament to the sheer willpower of both combatants. The world around them seems to respond to their clash. The skies darken, clouds boiling with a tempestuous energy that mirrors the battle below. The ground shakes with each impact, as if the earth itself is shivering in anticipation of the end. The sea, too, is a tumult of waves and foam, reflecting the chaotic dance of the serpent and the thunder god. In the midst of this chaotic struggle, the world itself is in turmoil. The cosmos is a battleground, with gods and giants locked in a desperate fight for survival. The forces of chaos, led by Loki and his monstrous offspring, are unleashed upon the world, bringing with them a wave of destruction that seems almost unstoppable. The air is thick with the acrid scent of smoke and the sounds of battle, the clash of steel, the roar of fire, and the cries of the fallen. Despite Thor's immense strength and courage, the battle is grueling and merciless. Each blow exchanged between him and Jormungandr is a testament to their sheer will and determination. The serpent, though wounded, continues to fight with a relentless fury that mirrors the chaos he represents. The struggle is not just a fight for survival, but a battle against the very forces that threaten to engulf all of existence. As the battle reaches its climax, the end is both inevitable and tragic. Thor, exhausted and wounded, delivers a final, devastating blow with Mjolnir. The impact is so powerful that it shakes the heavens and sends Jormungandr reeling. The serpent, mortally wounded, thrashes in a final, desperate effort to strike back, but his movements are growing weaker. The clash that has defined their existence now draws to a close, each combatant suffering the final consequences of their epic struggle. Jormungandr's final moments are filled with a profound sense of tragedy. As he succumbs to his wounds, the serpent's massive body begins to sink back into the ocean, his once mighty form slowly disappearing beneath the waves. The sea calms, the storm subsides, and the world is left in the aftermath of the cataclysmic clash. The cosmic struggle between Thor and Jormungandr has reached its end, but the echoes of their battle will resonate through the ages. Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, marks the end of an era. The gods and giants have fought their final battle, and the world stands on the brink of a new beginning. Jormungandr's role in this grand conflict is both a symbol of the primal chaos that threatens to consume all existence and a reminder of the delicate balance that must be restored. His final moments are a poignant reflection of the struggle between order and chaos, a battle that has shaped the destiny of the cosmos. As the dust settles and the world begins to recover from the devastation, the legacy of Jormungandr and the events of Ragnarok are etched into the annals of myth and legend. The serpent's role in the twilight of the gods serves as a powerful reminder of the eternal struggle between order and chaos, a timeless conflict that will forever shape the course of existence. The battlefield of Ragnarok is now eerily silent, a heavy calm settling over the chaos. The once roiling sky has grown still, and the remnants of the fierce battle lie scattered across a landscape marked by fire and ruin. The clash of titans is over, but the weight of what has transpired is palpable, filling the air with a profound sense of loss. Jormungandr, the world serpent, lies coiled on the battlefield, his once mighty body now still and lifeless. The serpent's death is a monumental event, its magnitude echoing through the very fabric of existence. 
His immense, scaled form, which once surged with unrestrained power, now lies motionless, the sea around him beginning to calm as if mourning the loss of its ancient guardian. The great serpent's final, shuddering breaths have faded into silence, and the waves lap gently against his body, a final, soft requiem for a creature whose existence was so entwined with the very essence of chaos. The sight of Jormungandr's death is a somber one. His eyes, once glowing with a fearsome light, are now closed in eternal rest. The sea, once churned into violent froth by his struggle, has settled into a sullen, reflective calm. The serpent's scales, which had shimmered with a dark, mysterious allure, now lie dull and lifeless, their grandeur gone with his passing. His death marks the end of an era, a tragic conclusion to a story that was as old as the world itself. In the wake of Jormungandr's fall, the battlefield is cast into an even deeper shadow by the death of Thor. The Thunder God, who had fought with unwavering courage and strength, now lies defeated. His hammer, Mjolnir, is still clutched in his lifeless hand, a symbol of the might and valor that defined him. Thor's final moments were spent in the grim task of vanquishing the serpent, a task that took all his strength and willpower. The god's demise is a poignant counterpoint to the serpent's death, a stark reminder of the personal cost of the cosmic struggle that has just unfolded. The sight of Thor's lifeless body is heart-wrenching. His once powerful form is now motionless, the fire in his eyes extinguished. The Thunder God's armor, once gleaming with the promise of victory, is now battered and worn, a testament to the ferocity of the battle he has endured. His death is a profound loss, not only to the gods, but to the world itself, which now faces the aftermath of Ragnarok without its mighty protector. As Thor's body lies on the battlefield, his loss is deeply felt by those who remain. The gods and giants, who have witnessed the great struggle, now face the sobering reality of a world that has been forever changed. The silence that follows the battle is a heavy one, filled with the unspoken grief of those who have lost their greatest champion and the monstrous serpent who was both a foe and a symbol of the chaotic forces that shaped their world. The world itself seems to mourn the passing of these colossal figures. The land is scarred by the battle, the once vibrant landscapes now reduced to a desolate expanse of ashes and ruins. The sea, once a turbulent expanse, has become a quiet, reflective expanse, its waves gently caressing the serpent's body as if to offer a final farewell. The sky, which had roared with the clash of gods and monsters, is now a somber blanket of gray, echoing the solemnity of the aftermath. In the stillness that follows, the implications of Jormungandr and Thor's deaths begin to sink in. Their passing marks not just the end of their own stories, but a profound shift in the world's balance. The serpent's death signifies the end of the chaos that he represented, but it also leaves a void that will be felt throughout the world. Thor's death represents the end of a heroic era, a time of gods who fought valiantly against the forces of darkness. The world is left to reckon with the consequences of their passing, the struggle between order and chaos now lying in the wake of their final confrontation. The end of Jormungandr and Thor's saga is a poignant moment in the tapestry of myth and legend. Their deaths are a powerful reminder of the eternal struggle between the forces of creation and destruction, a struggle that has shaped the very nature of existence. The profound grief and solemnity that follow their passing reflect the deep impact they have had on the world and the weight of their departure from the cosmic stage. As the world begins to heal from the wounds of Ragnarok, the memory of Jormungandr and Thor will linger, a testament to the fierce and tragic clash that defined their final moments. Their stories will be remembered as symbols of the epic struggle that defined the twilight of the gods, a struggle that has left an indelible mark on the fabric of existence. As the final echoes of Ragnarok fade into the distance, the world is left in a state of profound silence. The once violent skies are now a serene canvas, bathed in the soft light of a reborn dawn. The devastation of the old world has given way to the emergence of something new, a landscape that slowly stirs from its ashes. It is a world reborn, touched by the promise of renewal after the chaos that nearly consumed it. Amid the remnants of the old world, life begins to stir once more. From the scattered ruins and smoldering debris, tiny shoots of green push through the scorched earth, defying the devastation that had once ruled. 
The land, scarred and broken, starts to heal, as if the very soil remembers the ancient songs of growth and regeneration. It is as if the earth itself is taking a deep breath, preparing to nurture a new age. The sea, which had once roared with the fury of Jormungandr and the clash of gods, now laps gently against the shores, its waters clear and tranquil. The waves, now soft and rhythmic, seem to hum with a quiet promise. Where the sea had once been a chaotic expanse of turmoil, it now reflects the calm of a world starting anew. The shores, which had witnessed the final, fateful moments of the great serpent, are now gentle and inviting, welcoming the dawn of a new beginning. In this new world, the air is filled with a fresh, hopeful energy. The sky, which had been darkened by the smoke of battle and the fury of the gods, is now a brilliant expanse of blue, stretching endlessly and untouched by the scars of conflict. The light that bathes the land is soft and golden, as if the sun itself is smiling upon the rebirth of creation. It is a light that speaks of new possibilities and the promise of a future unburdened by the shadows of the past. The creatures of this new world are a testament to the enduring spirit of life. Animals, once driven to the brink by the cataclysm, now emerge in vibrant flocks and herds, their calls filling the air with the music of existence. The forests and meadows, once barren and desolate, are now alive with the colors and sounds of nature reclaiming its place. The rebirth of these creatures signifies the resilience of life, even in the face of the greatest trials. The gods, who have witnessed the end of an era, are now faced with the task of guiding and nurturing this new world. They move among the landscapes, their presence a comforting reminder of the old order that is now intertwined with the new. Their wisdom and strength are essential in shaping a world that is still finding its way, as they work to restore balance and harmony in this fresh chapter of existence. In this new beginning, there is a profound sense of hope and renewal. The world, which had once been shattered by the fierce struggle of Ragnarok, now stands as a symbol of the cyclical nature of existence. It is a reminder that even after the greatest trials and the deepest sorrows, there is always the possibility of rebirth and renewal. The scars of the past may remain, but they are now part of a larger story of healing and growth. The new world emerging after Ragnarok is a canvas of infinite possibilities. It is a place where the lessons of the past are remembered, not as burdens, but as the foundation upon which a brighter future can be built. The land, the sea, and the sky all bear witness to the enduring spirit of creation, a spirit that refuses to be extinguished even in the face of the most profound darkness. As life begins to flourish once more, the new world stands as a testament to the resilience of existence. It is a place where hope and renewal are not just dreams but realities, where the cycle of life continues with a renewed vigor. The rebirth of the world after Ragnarok is a reminder that, even after the darkest of times, there is always the promise of a new dawn, a new beginning, and a future that is bright with the possibilities of creation and growth. In the wake of Ragnarok, where the echoes of destruction slowly fade, Jormungandr's legacy weaves through the new world like a whispered memory carried by the wind. Even as the world begins anew, the shadow of the great serpent remains, a poignant reminder of the past and a symbol of the enduring cycle of life and death. The serpent, who once encircled the world with his massive, coiled body, now finds his story etched into the very fabric of the reborn earth. Though Jormungandr himself lies defeated, his influence persists in the legends and landscapes that have emerged from the ashes. His name is spoken with a mix of reverence and awe, a testament to the profound impact he had on the world's history. In the New World, Jormungandr's legacy manifests in subtle yet significant ways. The oceans, once tumultuous and wild under his reign, now reflect a calm serenity. Yet, their depth and mystery still whisper tales of the great serpent who once ruled the waves. Sailors and wanderers speak of the ocean's restless moods as the lingering spirit of Jormungandr, a reminder of the ancient power that once roared beneath the surface. The sea is no longer a place of fear, but a living monument to the serpent's past dominion. The land itself carries traces of Jormungandr's existence. Some of the places most deeply touched by his presence during the chaos of Ragnarok bear marks of transformation. Where once there were barren wastelands, there are now fertile grounds, rich and vibrant. The serpent's final moments left their imprint, creating landscapes that are lush and full of life. 
These places are regarded with a sacred awe, as if the very soil remembers the struggle between the gods and the serpent, and now breathes new life into the world. Legends of Jormungand are woven into the cultural fabric of the New World. Songs and stories of the serpent's fierce battles and his fateful encounter with Thor become timeless tales, told around hearths and shared among generations. These stories are not merely about past glories and conflicts, but are imbued with lessons about the cycles of existence and the balance between creation and destruction. Jormungandr's tale is a powerful reminder of the forces that shape the world and the inevitability of change. The rebirth of the world carries with it a renewed sense of respect for the natural forces that Jormungandr embodied. His image, once a symbol of chaos and destruction, becomes a powerful emblem of the cycle of life. People understand that the serpent's death was not an end, but a crucial part of a larger process. In honoring Jormungandr, they acknowledge the duality of existence, the need for both destruction and renewal to bring about growth and transformation. In the new world, his legacy also inspires art and craftsmanship. Sculptors and artisans craft intricate depictions of Jormungandr, capturing his serpentine form in stone and metal. These works are not only artistic expressions, but also spiritual symbols, reflecting the profound impact of the serpent on the people's understanding of their world. The great serpent's image, once feared, now becomes a symbol of the enduring power of nature and the mysteries that lie beyond human comprehension. In the quiet places where the new world is still coming to life, the serpent's legacy continues to shape the very essence of the land. His presence, though no longer a physical force, is felt in the way nature harmonizes and in the reverence with which people approach the world around them. Jormungandr's influence endures in the stories told to children, the songs sung in celebration, and the very way people interact with the natural world. Jormungandr's legacy is a poignant reminder that even after the greatest battles and the most profound upheavals, there is always a place for remembrance and reverence. His story, interwoven into the fabric of the new world, serves as a testament to the enduring nature of myth and memory. The serpent's final chapter, filled with both grandeur and tragedy, remains a central piece of the world's ever-evolving narrative, continuing to shape and inspire even in the face of change. In the dim, flickering light of ancient Norse halls, where shadows dance across rugged walls, the image of Jormungandr emerges from the depths of time, preserved in art and literature. The great serpent, coiled in a cycle of endless power, slithers through the annals of Norse creativity, leaving a mark that speaks of both awe and fear. In the ancient tapestries and carvings that adorn Norse artifacts, Jormungandr is depicted with a majesty that is both terrifying and mesmerizing. His serpentine body, often shown in elaborate patterns, wraps around itself in endless loops. These depictions, with their sinuous lines and intricate designs, capture not only the serpent's immense size, but also his inescapable presence. Artists of old, with a reverence for their subject, etched his form into stone and wood, their hands trembling with the weight of the stories they told. One of the most striking portrayals of Jormungandr is found in the Vinland map, a piece of Viking art that intertwines mythology with geography. Here, the serpent's body is depicted encircling the known world, emphasizing his role as a cosmic entity whose presence is both vast and enveloping. This depiction is more than just an artistic choice. It symbolizes the belief in Jormungandr's dominion over the oceans and his pivotal role in the balance of the cosmos. In the poetic Eddas, Jormungandr's presence is as potent as in physical art. These ancient texts are filled with the resonant echoes of his story, portraying him as a force of nature whose battle with Thor is both an epic clash and a reflection of the eternal struggle between order and chaos. The Eddas describe Jormungandr with vivid imagery, painting him as a monstrous creature whose every movement is fraught with foreboding. The poetry, rich with dramatic tension, evokes a sense of the serpent's overwhelming power and the dread he inspires. The Thor's Fishing Trip Saga is a particularly poignant piece of literature that brings Jormungandr to life. In this story, Thor's attempt to capture the serpent while fishing with the giant Hymir is depicted with gripping intensity. The serpent's immense size is vividly described, with every ripple in the water and every strain of Thor's muscles accentuating the monumental struggle. 
This narrative not only highlights Jormungandr's physical form, but also his role as an almost insurmountable force, a being whose existence is entwined with the fate of the gods and the world itself. Norse art often frames Jormungandr as a symbol of the cosmos's inherent danger and beauty. In one famous illustration, found in the Galahus horns, the serpent is shown coiled around a divine figure, emphasizing the interconnectedness of myth and reality. The artwork's detailed lines and dramatic portrayal capture the essence of Jormungandr's influence, showcasing how his presence transcends mere myth and becomes a central part of Norse visual culture. Another moving representation comes from the Osberg ship, a ceremonial vessel adorned with carvings that depict Jormungandr in various forms. The serpent's image, carved into the ship's prow, is a testament to his role as both a protector and a harbinger. The ship, a vessel for the dead, carries Jormungandr's legacy into the afterlife, linking him to the journey beyond the mortal world. The artistry here speaks to the deep connection between the serpent and the Norse understanding of life, death, and the passage between worlds. In the literature, the serpentine form of Jormungandr is often described with a chilling clarity. His role in the Ragnarok prophecy, where he is destined to rise against Thor and bring about the end of days, is depicted with a haunting inevitability. The tales convey a sense of dread and awe, capturing the serpent's role as a harbinger of chaos and a crucial player in the cosmic drama. The words evoke the serpentine coils as not just a physical presence, but a metaphor for the inescapable forces that shape existence. In both art and literature, Jormungandr's depiction resonates with a haunting beauty. The ancient Norse creators, through their intricate carvings and evocative poetry, have immortalized the serpent in a way that speaks to the primal fears and reverence of their world. His image, with its intertwining patterns and epic stories, continues to stir the imagination, reminding us of the timeless power and mystery that define the mythological world. In the bustling world of modern media, where legends and myths often intertwine with contemporary storytelling, Jormungandr slithers through the shadows of pop culture leaving an indelible mark on our imaginations. This ancient Norse serpent, whose tale is steeped in both grandeur and dread, has found new life in the vibrant landscape of modern media, literature, and entertainment. From the pages of fantasy novels to the screens of blockbuster movies, Jormungandr's presence is as captivating as it is menacing. In literature, he reappears not just as a relic of ancient myths, but as a potent symbol of cosmic conflict and elemental power. Authors weave his story into their narratives, capturing the essence of his mythological role while giving him a contemporary twist. His image often evokes a mixture of awe and fear, a reminder of the timeless struggle between order and chaos that defines his character. In fantasy literature, Jormungandr has become more than just a mythical creature, he is a representation of the primal forces that shape the world. His serpentine form appears in epic sagas and modern fantasy novels, where he is portrayed with a blend of ancient reverence and modern creativity. The authors draw upon the rich tapestry of Norse mythology, reimagining the serpent as a formidable force whose actions have ripple effects across the realms. Through these narratives, Jormungandr continues to embody the duality of creation and destruction, serving as a powerful reminder of the mythical past that still influences our present. The influence of Jormungandr extends into the realm of video games, where he often serves as a formidable adversary or an enigmatic ally. In these interactive worlds, players encounter Jormungandr in various forms, from epic boss battles to intricate quests that delve into his mythological roots. His presence in games is a testament to the enduring fascination with his character, as players grapple with the serpent's immense power and complex lore. The interactive nature of gaming allows for a unique exploration of Jormungandr's myth, immersing players in a world where they confront the ancient serpent's legacy head-on. Film and television have also embraced Jormungandr, transforming him from a figure of ancient myth into a symbol of cinematic spectacle. In movies and TV series inspired by Norse mythology, Jormungandr often appears as a breathtaking visual effect, his serpentine form coiling around the screen with a sense of awe-inspiring majesty. These modern interpretations bring the ancient serpent to life with cutting-edge technology, offering audiences a glimpse into the mythological past while thrilling them with contemporary visual artistry.
In these modern adaptations, Jormungandr's role is frequently tied to themes of destiny and apocalypse. His presence is a reminder of the inevitable clash between gods and monsters, a central theme in the saga of Ragnarok. Filmmakers and show creators use Jormungandr's story to explore the dramatic tension of fateful encounters and the cyclical nature of existence. Through vivid storytelling and dramatic visuals, they capture the essence of Jormungandr's myth, ensuring that his legacy continues to resonate with audiences across the globe. Beyond literature and media, Jormungandr's influence can be seen in various facets of pop culture. He has inspired everything from fashion and art to music and tattoos. His image, with its coiling form and mythical connotations, appears on everything from album covers to clothing lines, reflecting the serpent's enduring allure. The modern reinterpretation of Jormungandr in these diverse cultural expressions underscores the deep and lasting impact of his mythological legacy. In pop culture, Jormungandr represents more than just a mythical creature. He is a symbol of the eternal struggle between creation and destruction, the old world and the new. His presence in modern media serves as a bridge between ancient mythology and contemporary storytelling, reminding us of the timeless nature of these ancient tales. Through books, games, films, and art, Jormungandr's story continues to captivate and inspire, proving that the echoes of the past still resonate powerfully in the present. As we navigate the vibrant tapestry of modern culture, Jormungandr's serpent coils remind us of the ancient myths that continue to shape our world. His legacy endures not only as a powerful symbol of cosmic conflict, but as a testament to the enduring power of myth to inspire and captivate. In every corner of the world, the ocean has whispered tales of enormous, fearsome sea serpents. From the icy waters of the north to the warm seas of the south, these mythical creatures have captivated human imagination with their formidable presence and haunting beauty. Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent of Norse mythology, is one of the most famous sea serpents, but he shares a striking resemblance with other legendary serpents from various cultures. In Norse myth, Jormungandr coils around the world, his body encircling the land and sea. He symbolizes not only the fearsome power of nature, but also the cyclical nature of life and death. His presence is felt in the very heartbeat of the world, as he waits for Ragnarok, the end of days, where he will clash with Thor, the Thunder God. This story of Jormungandr is mirrored in many cultures, each with its own serpent legend that speaks to the universal themes of chaos, power, and the unknown. One of the most famous sea serpents is the Leviathan from the Bible. Described in the Old Testament, the Leviathan is a monstrous creature of chaos and destruction, often depicted as a dragon or a serpent. Like Jormungandr, the Leviathan represents a primal force of nature that defies human control. The image of Leviathan, with its terrifying power and impenetrable scales, mirrors the Norse serpent's role as a symbol of cosmic struggle and upheaval. In Greek mythology, the sea is home to several monstrous serpents, but none are as iconic as the Hydra. The Hydra, a multi-headed serpent, is a formidable creature that grows two heads for every one that is cut off. This regenerative power makes the Hydra a symbol of enduring evil and chaos, much like Jormungandr, whose presence signifies an unending cycle of conflict and destruction. The struggle against the Hydra, like Thor's battle with Jormungandr, is a metaphor for humanity's fight against overwhelming forces that seem insurmountable. Moving to the east, Chinese mythology introduces the mighty dragon. Although not always depicted as a sea serpent, the dragon in Chinese culture embodies similar themes of power and nature's control. The dragon's role in controlling weather and its connection to water and rivers show a parallel to Jormungandr's influence over the oceans and storms. Both creatures are revered and feared for their immense power and their deep connection to the natural world. In Japanese mythology, the sea serpent known as Ryujin, the dragon king, rules over the oceans. Ryujin, like Jormungandr, is a formidable and ancient being, symbolizing the immense power of the sea. He controls the tides and is often portrayed as both a guardian and a threat. The Ryujin's ability to influence the natural world, along with his association with the sea, reflects similar themes found in the legend of Jormungandr. In the Americas, the Aztecs spoke of the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, who was revered as a creator god and a symbol of life and death. 
While not a sea serpent, Quetzalcoatl's role as a cosmic force that bridges the divine and the earthly realms resonates with the role of Jormungandr in Norse mythology. Both creatures embody the complex relationship between creation, destruction, and the cyclical nature of existence. Even in modern folklore, the Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, is a contemporary echo of ancient sea serpent legends. Although Nessie is often thought of as a mysterious and elusive creature rather than a mythical force, the fascination with her echoes the timeless fear and wonder that sea serpents have evoked throughout history. Nessie's elusive nature and the mysteries surrounding her sightings align with the ancient sea serpent's role as symbols of the unknown and the uncharted depths of the world. These mythical sea serpents, from Jormungandr to the Leviathan, the Hydra, and beyond, are more than mere creatures of legend. They are powerful symbols of nature's uncontrollable forces and humanity's struggle to understand and confront them. Each culture's serpent embodies the fears and hopes of its people, reflecting a deep-seated recognition of the vast, mysterious, and often frightening power of the natural world. As we look at these serpents across cultures, we see that their stories, though varied in detail, all speak to the same universal themes of chaos, power, and the eternal dance between creation and destruction. In the shadowy corners of history, where myth and reality intertwine, the legendary Midgard serpent, Jormungandr, has captivated the imagination of many. This colossal sea serpent, encircling the world in Norse mythology, has left traces in the tangible world, offering glimpses into its mythic reality through archaeology. The search for Jormungandr is like chasing shadows, but what has been unearthed tells a tale of deep-rooted cultural significance and enduring mysteries. Imagine standing in a Scandinavian landscape where ancient people once walked, their lives intertwined with myths that have echoed through centuries. The Norse people, with their vibrant tales of gods and monsters, did not leave behind mere stories, they also left physical evidence that hints at their beliefs. Among the most evocative artifacts are the intricate carvings and inscriptions that depict serpentine figures. These images, often found on runestones and ship carvings, seem to whisper the legacy of Jormungandr, suggesting that the Great Serpent was not just a myth, but a powerful symbol deeply ingrained in Norse culture. One of the most significant archaeological finds is the Gelling Stone in Denmark, erected by King Gorm the Old in the 10th century. This monumental stone features carvings that include a serpent-like figure. Though not explicitly identified as Jormungandr, the resemblance to the Midgard serpent is striking. This stone serves as a testament to the central role that serpent imagery played in Norse art and belief systems. Its presence in a royal context highlights the importance of these myths in asserting authority and connecting with ancestral traditions. Another fascinating discovery is the Osberg ship unearthed in Norway in 1904. This Viking longship, dating back to the early 9th century, was buried with elaborate carvings that include serpentine motifs. The ship's prow features a detailed dragon head, which, while not a direct depiction of Jormungandr, symbolizes the fearsome power and mystery associated with sea serpents. This ship, used for burial, reflects how serpentine figures were linked with both the divine and the dangerous, indicating the reverence and fear these creatures inspired. The Vendel period helmets and artifacts also provide clues. These items, from the 6th to 8th centuries, often feature detailed engravings of serpents and dragons. While they do not depict Jormungandr directly, the designs echo the imagery associated with the Midgard serpent, suggesting a broader tradition of serpent symbolism in Norse culture. These artifacts were not just decorative, they were imbued with spiritual significance, hinting at the deep-seated beliefs about the power of serpents in the Norse worldview. Excavations of burial mounds and sacrificial sites have revealed offerings and artifacts related to serpentine figures. In some cases, animal bones and other remains were found arranged in patterns that suggest ritualistic practices involving serpents. These findings indicate that serpents, including potentially Jormungandr, were central to Norse rituals and cosmology. The care and significance given to these artifacts underscore the serpent's role in the spiritual and everyday lives of the Norse people. These archaeological discoveries, while not always providing a direct depiction of Jormungandr, build a vivid picture of how this mythical serpent was interwoven with the lives and beliefs of the Norse. 
The serpent's presence in art, artifacts, and burial practices reveals a profound connection between the physical world and the mythic narratives that shaped ancient Scandinavian culture. Each finding adds depth to our understanding of how Jormungandr and serpentine imagery in general was not merely a figment of imagination but a powerful symbol with real-world implications and significance. In the cold, quiet halls of museums and the sunlit expanses of ancient sites, the remnants of these myths continue to breathe life into our understanding of Jormungandr. Through these tangible connections to the past, we can sense the awe and reverence that ancient cultures held for their legendary serpent, a creature that looms large both in myth and in the material world they left behind. In the labyrinth of Norse mythology, Jormungandr, the immense sea serpent, stands as a figure shrouded in awe and mystery. Scholars have pored over ancient texts, debated theories, and pieced together fragments of the past to understand the true nature and origins of this mythical creature. The discussions are as intense as they are varied, revealing a complex tapestry of ideas about Jormungandr's place in the Norse cosmos and cultural consciousness. Picture the academic landscape as a grand hall where scholars, armed with ancient manuscripts and archaeological findings, debate the essence of Jormungandr. Some argue that Jormungandr is a symbol of chaos, reflecting the inherent dangers of the unknown and the uncontrollable. In this view, the serpent represents the vast, unpredictable power of the sea, a force that could bring both life and destruction. This perspective highlights the serpent's role in the Ragnarok myth, where it emerges as a harbinger of the end times, symbolizing the ultimate chaos that will engulf the world. Others explore Jormungandr's origins and connections to other mythologies. They propose that Jormungandr's serpent form might have roots in earlier, pre-Norse traditions. This theory suggests that the Midgard serpent could be a part of a broader Indo-European tradition of serpent deities, sharing similarities with creatures from ancient myths of other cultures. By comparing Jormungandr with serpents in Greek, Roman, and Celtic myths, scholars seek to trace a common thread that links these legends through time and geography. One particularly compelling theory is that Jormungandr's role and appearance may have been influenced by actual sea serpents observed by ancient sailors. In this view, Jormungandr represents a mythical exaggeration of real creatures, such as giant eels or sea snakes, that inspired awe and fear among the Norse seafarers. This theory finds support in the vivid descriptions of the serpent's vast length and the dramatic accounts of its interactions with Thor. Such interpretations highlight how real-world encounters could have transformed into mythic tales over time. Another area of debate centers on Jormungandr's symbolism in Norse cosmology. Some scholars argue that the serpent embodies the cyclical nature of existence, forever coiled around the world. In this interpretation, Jormungandr's encircling of Midgard is a metaphor for the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. His battle with Thor at Ragnarok is seen not just as a clash of titans, but as a representation of the eternal struggle between order and chaos, a struggle that shapes the very fabric of existence. The scholarly debates also touch on the linguistic and literary aspects of Jormungandr's character. By examining Old Norse texts and runic inscriptions, researchers try to uncover the meanings and connotations of the serpent's name. The word Jormungandr itself means giant encircler, which some interpret as a reflection of the serpent's cosmic role. Others analyze the serpent's depiction in poetry and sagas, revealing how Jormungandr was portrayed not just as a beast, but as a symbol of deeper themes like fate and destiny. The intense debate among scholars reflects the broader fascination with Jormungandr and the rich tapestry of Norse mythology. Each theory offers a different lens through which to view the Midgard serpent, contributing to a fuller understanding of its role and ancient beliefs. Through these discussions, Jormungandr emerges not only as a mythic creature, but as a reflection of human fears, hopes, and the enduring quest to understand the mysteries of the world. As scholars continue to explore the depths of Jormungandr's story, they keep alive the mythic legacy of this ancient serpent, weaving together history, legend, and cultural insights. Their debates and theories are more than academic exercises, they are a testament to the enduring power of mythology to captivate the imagination and spark a deeper understanding of our past. The name Jormungandr resonates through the ages, a powerful echo of Norse mythology. To truly understand this mythic serpent, 
one must first grasp the essence of his name and the language that gives life to his legend. Every syllable and term associated with Jormungand tells a story filled with depth and meaning that connects us to an ancient world of wonder and mystery. Jormungandr's name itself carries weight and significance. In Old Norse, the name translates roughly to the giant encircler. This name vividly reflects the serpent's role in the Norse cosmos. Imagine a massive serpent coiling around the world, its body stretching across the oceans and embracing the land in a tight, unyielding grip. The name Jormungandr paints a picture of this immense creature, forever looping around Midgard, holding the earth in its serpentine embrace. It's as if the name is not just a label, but a prophecy of its role in the great mythic cycle. Breaking down the name further reveals more about the serpent's nature. Jormungandr combines two Old Norse words, Jormun, meaning giant or great, and Gandr, which means serpent or beast. This fusion creates an image of a colossal, formidable creature that is far from ordinary. The term Jormun adds a sense of awe and terror, emphasizing the serpent's immense size and power. It's not just a creature of myth, but a symbol of something vast and almost incomprehensible. The linguistic journey doesn't stop with Jormungandr. Other names and terms associated with the serpent also offer insight into its character and the cultural beliefs of the Norse people. For instance, Jormungandr is sometimes called the Midgard Serpent, a name that highlights his role in encircling the world. This term underlines the serpent's function as a boundary and protector, a creature that holds the world together in its massive coils. The very notion of Midgard, the world of humans, being encircled by Jormungandr emphasizes the connection between humanity and the divine forces that shape their existence. Another important term is Migersormer, which is an alternative name for Jormungandr. In this context, Mygars means Middle Earth or the world of humans, and Ormer translates to worm or serpent. This name reinforces the idea that Jormungandr is an integral part of the human world, marking the boundary between the known and the unknown. It's a reminder of how closely the Norse people saw themselves tied to their myths and the creatures within them. Understanding these names and their origins provides a deeper connection to the ancient world. The Old Norse language, rich with poetic and mythic resonance, gives life to these stories in a way that modern translations sometimes struggle to capture. Each name carries with it not just a meaning, but a piece of the cultural and emotional landscape of the Norse people. The study of Jormungandr's names also reveals something about how the Norse viewed the world around them. In their cosmology, the world was not a static place, but a dynamic interplay of forces. Jormungandr, as the encircler of the world, symbolizes this dynamic nature, embodying both the boundaries of the known world and the chaos that lies beyond. His names reflect a deep understanding of the serpent's role in maintaining the balance between order and chaos, life and destruction. Every term and name associated with Jormungandr is a thread in the rich tapestry of Norse mythology. They offer glimpses into how the ancients saw their universe, their fears, and their hopes. The serpent's names are not just words, but echoes of a time when the boundaries of the world were defined not just by geography, but by the creatures that inhabited the myths and legends of the past. Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent, coils through the heart of Norse mythology as a symbol of immense power and eternal struggle. Beyond his role in ancient tales and epic battles, Jormungandr stands as a profound symbol, inviting deep philosophical and religious reflections. His presence in the myths is not merely a part of the story, but a gateway to understanding some of the most profound aspects of existence and the human condition. To understand Jormungandr's symbolism, consider his role as the great encircler of Midgard, the human world. This serpent wraps around the earth, his tail grasped in his mouth, forming a cosmic loop. In this eternal circle, there is a powerful metaphor for the cycle of existence. Life, in its essence, is a continuous cycle of creation and destruction, of beginnings and endings. Jormungandr embodies this relentless cycle, reminding us of the never-ending flow of time and the inescapable nature of fate. In philosophical terms, Jormungandr can be seen as a symbol of the boundary between the known and the unknown. His presence encircling the world represents the limits of human understanding and the constant presence of mystery that lies beyond. 
Just as Jormungandr encircles Midgard, so too does the serpent symbolize the boundaries of human knowledge and experience. His existence challenges us to confront the unknown and to acknowledge that there are forces and realities beyond our comprehension. This serpent's relationship with Thor, particularly their fated confrontation during Ragnarok, adds another layer of philosophical depth. The battle between Thor and Jormungandr is not just a clash of gods and monsters, but a reflection of the struggle between order and chaos, between life and the destructive forces that threaten it. Jormungandr, with his chaotic nature and role as a bringer of destruction, represents the ever-present threat to the order of the world. His battle with Thor becomes a dramatic illustration of the ongoing struggle to maintain balance and harmony in the face of overwhelming forces of disorder. Religiously, Jormungandr's symbolism extends into concepts of fate and destiny. In Norse mythology, the serpent's role is intricately tied to the prophecy of Ragnarok, the end of the world. Jormungandr's actions and his ultimate fate are not just random occurrences, but are deeply intertwined with the cosmic order and the inevitability of destiny. This reflects a philosophical view of life where events are predestined, and individuals are bound to fulfill roles written in the tapestry of fate. Jormungandr's existence and actions highlight the belief that even the most powerful beings are subject to the grand design of the cosmos, a reminder of the limits imposed upon all entities by the forces of destiny. Furthermore, Jormungandr's symbolism can be viewed through the lens of the dualities that define human experience. The serpent embodies both the creative and destructive aspects of nature. His encircling of Midgard represents the protective, boundary-setting function of nature, but his role in Ragnarok reveals the destructive potential inherent in the same forces. This duality speaks to the philosophical understanding that life is composed of opposing forces that are essential to the balance of the universe. Jormungandr, therefore, serves as a powerful reminder of the complexity of existence, where creation and destruction are two sides of the same coin. In religious and philosophical reflections, Jormungandr's story invites us to consider our place within the larger framework of existence. His eternal cycle around the world prompts us to think about our own lives and our struggles with the boundaries and challenges we face. Just as Jormungandr represents the forces that shape the cosmos, we too grapple with the forces that define our own experiences, our understanding of fate, and our quest for meaning. Jormungandr's role as a symbol transcends the confines of ancient myth. His presence in the myths of the Norse people continues to inspire philosophical and religious reflections about the nature of existence, the struggle between order and chaos, and the inescapable nature of fate. His story is a powerful reminder of the profound questions that lie at the heart of human experience and the eternal dance between creation and destruction that defines our world. In the vast tapestry of myth, Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent, weaves a tale of immense power and haunting beauty. His legend reaches beyond ancient texts and whispers through time, leaving an indelible mark on our understanding of myth and storytelling. Jormungandr's significance is far more than that of a mere creature of legend. He embodies the profound themes of fate, chaos, and the cyclical nature of existence. Jormungandr's story begins with his birth in the world of Norse mythology, a creature destined for greatness and conflict. As the Midgard serpent, he encircles the world, a living symbol of the boundaries between the known and the unknown. His presence around the earth signifies not just his role as a giant serpent, but as a living metaphor for the limits of human understanding. Encircling Midgard with his tail in his mouth, he becomes a reminder of the endless cycle of time and the inescapable forces that govern existence. The epic confrontation between Jormungandr and Thor stands as one of the most dramatic moments in Norse mythology. Their battle, destined to occur at Ragnarok, represents more than just a clash of gods and monsters. It is a profound reflection of the struggle between order and chaos, between the forces of creation and destruction that shape the world. Jormungandr's role in this conflict underscores the idea that even the greatest of beings are bound by the forces of fate and cosmic balance. As Ragnarok unfolds, Jormungandr's role intensifies, culminating in a cataclysmic clash with Thor. The serpent's final battle is not merely a fight for survival, but a dramatic enactment of the world's end and rebirth. This confrontation, charged with the weight of prophecy, reveals the enduring themes of fate and destiny that define his story. 
it is a reminder that the forces of destruction are not separate from creation but are intertwined in the grand scheme of existence. Following the end of the world, Jormungandr's legacy endures in the new world that emerges from the ashes of Ragnarok. His death, though tragic, is a necessary part of the cycle of rebirth. In this new world, Jormungandr's story continues to echo, a powerful symbol of the eternal struggle between order and chaos and the ceaseless cycle of life and death. His legacy is not just a part of the past, but a living testament to the themes that continue to resonate through our understanding of mythology and existence. Jormungandr's influence extends beyond the ancient texts and into modern culture. His image has inspired countless interpretations in art, literature, and media. From the depths of myth to the forefront of contemporary imagination, the Midgard Serpent remains a compelling symbol of the mysteries of the cosmos and the enduring power of myth. His story, rich with dramatic conflict and profound themes, continues to captivate and inspire, ensuring that his legacy endures through the ages. In reflecting on Jormungandr's place in myth and culture, we see a figure who represents more than just a monstrous serpent. He is a symbol of the forces that shape our world, a reminder of the profound mysteries that lie beyond our understanding, and a powerful embodiment of the eternal struggle between chaos and order. His story is a testament to the enduring power of myth to convey the deepest truths about existence, fate, and the cyclical nature of life.